Hello and welcome to the Black Dog Podcast, episode number 380. Are we still in the 300s? Yes. Oh. Yes, we are. I'm getting bored with this number now. Can we... Like, you okay, know. we're in... We're, welcome to the Black Dog Podcast, number 3080. Yay! Yay! 3080. Who knew we'd get this far? Hello. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm Jim. I'm Elton. And this week we will be we're back, obviously, and we are also joined by mystery guest. Hello, I'm Elton's podcast husband. There you go, Elton's podcast husband, who shall only be referred to as Elton's podcast husband from here on in. No, please don't. Please don't. No, no, I think I think that's it now. I think we've done it now. I think that's it. So, it's, it's established, it's canon. Yeah, Elton's podcast husband, so EPH for short. So to me, yeah. yeah, okay, fair enough. Hello, EPH, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Cool, here, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, EPH will be joining us also. <laughs> it sounds like a rapper name, that, doesn't it? EPH. It, it does, yeah. Yeah, Snoop Dogg and EPH. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Sandy, can't you? Sorry, oh, sorry. Don't I'm, forget. I'm disappointed there's no camera so I could actually see your bobbing heads there, which I knew was taking place. Yeah. You, you know it. And we were throwing I shapes did. as well. We were. We were throwing there shapes. Were signs being, there were there were shapes being popped there. Gang signs, man. Gang signs. Yes. Anyway, right. So, uh, yes, Andy's here, um, EPH. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's stuck now. It's going to be like, it's going to be the emergency medical hologram or... <laughs> EPH. EPH. Hey, I'm down with that. El- Elton's <laughs> podcast husband. Right, so, um, yes, so this week we're back after another week away, so we're going to have a catch-up, see how everyone's been, and then we're going to get on to this week's movie, which is Children of Men. A cheerful little ditty. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Just to brighten everyone's day up in this miserable, cold, wet November fucking month of shit. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> political instability. <laughs> so. Political chaos. <laughs> Polit- <laughs> Political chaos, frequent flyer miles at hospital. I mean, you name it. I, yep. I don't think this fucking month could. This month can do for fucking do it, one. It can fucking do it one. Can fucking do one. Anyway, but before we do that, before we get into that, a little parish notice. A little parish parish notice. This Monday coming, which is Monday the uh, the twenty sixth. Yes. Um, there is a um, movie quiz. <laughs> pub quiz thing yes there is going on in angel islington that's right yeah, yeah. and and we're going to it we are going to be going oh, to it yes we, we be, have a team we're going to be a black dog team are you do you like being at a team i like being at a team yes so we you don't like being at a team there's something wrong with you yes we put the go iron, team. We put the iron team and you in and anyway moving on yeah. and so um where is it, Dal? You got the, you um, look. You looked like you were looking it up. We were almost professional. I, I am. I am proceeding to the page <laughs> right now, as fast as the Your... interwebs will actually take me. Especially when you know on Facebook when you have to go to things like events and then see the thing you've been invited to. I think. I think when we're what? having those moments of technical ineptitude, <laughs> right, we should have that. Do you remember that, That's that what show, you mean, you mean, you Jack mean? Hargreaves in it, the the country <laughs> way, where they used to have those two shy horses pulling along a... Oh, God. Uh, uh, you know, they used to have that. Uh, some old bloke with white hair talked about growing turnips in a plant pot or something. Jack Hargreaves' old country. <laughs> That's it, old country. There you go. Hold That's on. him. Hold on. Hold old on. country theme. Hold on, where is it? Jack Hargreaves' old country theme, where is it? See, I always think of that when we start having shit like this. Original out of town, hold on. I don't know if this is going to work. That's the one, oh, no, that's a trout fisher. Hold on. Hold on. No, what is this? Oh, Southern, there we go. This is it. So I'm just going now to the event. And I found the event. Go on then, what is it? Um... It's a charity pub quiz, yes, being taking place at the brew house and kitchen in Torrens Street, London, United Kingdom. Brilliant. That was that was worth it. That was it? worth it. So, um, yeah, so we're going to a pub quiz uh, about movies and TV. That's right. Yeah, 
we we there is no there is no point in coming second place. If they come second place, we can't we can't report this at all. Well, no, we will crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and hear the lamentations of the bar staff. If we come (laughs) second place, we are not doing the podcast anymore. That's it. That what? We're not doing. We're not doing the podcast. No, no, don't give him an out. Don't give him an out. (laughs) Fuck. Do you, do you mean I'm free? <laughs> do you mean? Do you mean? Hang on. So, so you mean if I if I deliberately fuck it up and and spill Martin Scorsese, George Lucas on the on the sheet, I can I can be free. I can I can be out. You can. Oh well, there you go. So anyway, if anyone in London, if anyone listening to this is in London and fancies going to this pub quiz thing i don't know how many people can be in the team so i don't know if we can actually help field a team of like 400 but you know if we can that would be good well, what we could do is we could mm-hmm. all kind of you know how like kids suddenly get like a rain mat and all pile underneath it to pretend they're adults yeah. we could have like about five <laughs> or six people under we could all be we could just pretend there's four of us but actually there's 20 that's that's otherwise known as the Vatican Shuffle, isn't it? I think it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, never mind. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. Anyway, so that's 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 um, that's what time is it from, Darren? Um, I shall check again. Oh, for Lee. fuck's um, sake! Here we go. I'm calling. There we go. No, it's here. Right. It's from seven o'clock in the evening until nine o'clock at night. Right. And its full address is um, yes. Again. The the brew house and kitchen, uh, Torrent Street, Angel, London. Right. Okay. I'll... Do you want the Do you want the postcode? Um, Shall I say that? Yeah, go on in. Okay, so it's E C one V, one N Q. Right. Okay. There you go. Brilliant. So anyway, there you go. That's that's the parish notice over and done with. It certainly is. I um yeah. So if some of you come along, brilliant. If you don't, you'll hear about it next week, I'm sure, when we all sit there and go, We lost. And even yeah, even if we want to see our attempts go up in flames, you know. So uh yeah, yeah. You, you, you could come along and Okay. I've and it's taken me this long to get to fucking out of it was out of town, not old country. Was it out of town? That's it. That's the tune. There you go. Ah, uh, to simpler days before the internet. Yeah. Back when we used to use lights across the distances to signal one another. Ah, yes. Yes. It's called Ricardo's Del... Al- no, never mind. I'm not going to bother with that. I think you got it right the first it's time. Yeah. Rescue Rodos de la Haramba. Out of town. Yes. Out of town. That doesn't sound right. You just listened to it earlier on, you divoy. I just found a higher quality version. Well, it's it's it's, it's harking back to old days. I hope there's a question in this pub quiz about out of I town so. starring Jack Hargreaves. Because, oh look, there's a lovely, lovely... Kid. What are the chances? <laughs> Low to no... Anyway, that's enough of that. Right, so um yes, this this is eight and a half minutes of wasted waffle. So um let's get started. Let's it's see. all filler. It's all killer, man. It's no all, filler. All killer, no filler. All killer, no filler. <laughs> is that right? That's it. This is what this podcast is. Is it? Yeah. So how, when we go off on a rant been... about sort of like belly, belly button fluff. It's all killer, no filler. Yeah. Uh, quick poll, um belly button fluff, who has just, uh, I say we've all got blue belly button fluff, no matter what fluff goes in there it always comes out blue. Yeah, it yeah, always so smells. Mean. It always smells vaguely of r- mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that is a mushroom. <laughs> oh right, okay. It's a very tiny, microscopic cluster of mushrooms. I get visited by Jerry, the belly button elf. Yes. Mm. Anyway, let's go. Never mind. Let's let's just move on. You can tell we haven't talked for a while. <laughs> um, that, I, I've been so lonely. We've been um, so lonely. Right. So, um, let's find out how everyone's week's been. So we'll start with our guest, Andy. EPH. Hello there. Hello. Yes. EPH. Yes, I'm still here. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. Yes. Would you Would you like to furnish us with the, your doings of the week? Or, or uh, my doings of the week um, of of this month of November, which, which it sounds like you're a bit down on, and I understand that because it has been rather uh, chilly today, to put it mildly. Mm. Um, it's been a pretty good week, it must be said. Um, for for those long time listeners and going back a while, um, my wife has been in exile in a far off foreign land for. Quite a while, and has now returned to me. Finally, 
thank fuck. So um, that was nice. And yep. uh, and it was also my birthday last week, which was also hey. nice. And I got hey. together with hey. I got together with many friends for drinks and alcohol and such fun things. And not so dead forth. yet. Not not dead yet. No, hey. it's still early though. You know, <laughs> Andy Palester. But night is young. Level up. <laughs> right. Cool. So yes. Birthday and birthday and wife. That's that's quite yes. A, quite birthday a, wife. Birthday. I'll leave. I'll leave. I'll, 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 I'll leave the mathematicians out there to put two and two together, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. Would Andy you like, is now forty six. Yes. <laughs> would you like a wife for your birthday? Yes, I would. Well, there you go. Courtesy <laughs> of the government. <laughs> She's there. Here she is in a box. In a wife. Better She's get that wife, box man, open. Man. There's no holes in it for her to breathe. She's oh, only got the oxygen oh. she got in there with. <laughs> yes, it's probably all carbon dioxide now. It's, it's, it's like it's like the pod from uh, P- Primer. Yes, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> right. So birthday, birthday, and wife. Yes. Um, 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 yeah, and uh, a, f- a few of those occasions where I've had to do that work thing, I keep hearing so much about. Um, I'm not a fan, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so all, all in all, after well, I, I I also had a uh, a lovely opportunity to catch up with a good drink with your good self uh, one day last week, which was lovely. So yes, huzzah! Ah, huzzah! That was always good. Mm. Doesn't mention about catching up with me for a nice drink at his birthday. Does I it? believe I mentioned that birthday with many good friends, which yeah, includes you. Oh, oh, does it? Oh, right. Okay, that's nice to know. Can't we could have said it at a fucking time, but well, never mind. Oh, would you like some Savlon for that highly sensitive <laughs> skin you have there, sir? <laughs> I mean, we, we could we could have pointed out that you turned up like an hour and a half late, but I chose not to. I would fire my gun, but it looks like my trigger's been broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pulled so many times this evening. I'm yeah. so triggered. <laughs> Triggered? Did you just assume my triggering? <laughs> Good lord! There's got to be a joke in there about triggers, broom. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. Otherwise known <laughs> as the USS Enterprise, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, oh, never little mind. crossover there, little oh, crossover. Yeah. It's, it's a little, little bit of interaction yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> anyway, cool. Okay, so um, that it, sir, or should we? Uh, that's, a, that's about it. Yeah, do. It's, okay. It's, then, it's, in which case, to we... do have a large thing. There you go. It's... Yeah. Move at a pace. We'll, we'll try. Yeah, after that really waffly opener, let's try and keep this snappy. So then we'll, we'll move on to you, Jim. Yes. How's your week, sir, Fortnite? Um, not been great for a variety of reasons I'm not going to oh. go into. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but uh, I am petty enough to mention one petty thing about it. Okay. Go it for pissed it. me off. Um, Every now and again, I, I fire up iTunes just to look at my reviews about once mm-hmm. every six months when I remember. Yeah. And then you have to do all the change bloody region rubbish because unlike nearly every other sort of service on the internet, you know, when someone leaves you a comment or leaves you a review, you get an email, not iTunes, of course, and you have to just manually go through every region in the world looking to see if you've got a review. And yeah. I went to American one, I got a new review. Mm. Ooh. Now, podcasters always say, do, do we not, mm. how if you're going to leave a one-star review, at least leave a comment. Yes. Um, I've, I've changed my mind about that one, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I got this, re- this review from this um, colonial who <laughs> oh, said, okay. this podcast would be great if the podcaster didn't adopt a fake accent. Whoa. <laughs> now, I know some <laughs> Americans get confused because you have that thing of the World Series where only America plays. But, you know, there are other countries in the world, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that was not what I was expecting. For a one, and that was the one-star review, your accent. Yeah. Wow. Well, the, well, I, I, I think you should, you should immediately go off to um to BBC TV f- um news news reporter school. So you was going to speak of the Queen's English from yes. the nineteen fifties. Yes. Well, no, no, this is an American. So the problem was I wasn't speaking an American accent because obviously everyone talks like that, and no one talks like in different accents. They're all putting it on. Jesus. <laughs> I think this just gives us the ammunition to turn around and say. Right, we're taking it back, lads. 
I think I think it gives us it gives us a, a very good um, excuse to say that John Carpenter had the right idea with um, New York. <laughs> Just carry on. <laughs> wow, um, that's that's a cracker. That is that, that is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Was this the last thing that Amber did before she left the states to, to join up with with Andy? I, I can either confirm or deny, deny that fact. Although we have had many a conversation about. Um, uh, the pronunciation of words in English, I, I offer the solution, which I think is quite fair, that we actually rename the American language to Americanese. Solves the problem. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, I'm getting evil looks here at the minute. So yeah, I, 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 I was going to say, we, we, if, we, if we suddenly just hear you know, the sound of a cup smacking off your forehead, then we'll know exactly what's happening, okay? That's cool. The sound of a flick knife opening. Yeah, yeah. The sound, uh, just, just, just the sound of a head hitting a microphone. Just a sort of just, just moving scalpels and other sharp implements out of the way. I say tomato, <laughs> you say banana. <laughs> <laughs> I spell it color, you spell it color. <laughs> Where's that? Well, I wonder you? if it's. We actually got a one-star review on the Band of Brothers cast recently, so I wonder if it's the same person just going through. Oh, that was cycle. brilliant. <laughs> That was brilliant. What a yeah. dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> what did they say? Uh, I forget exactly what they said, but it was, it was having to go at us about the stuff that we turned around and said at the very beginning of the cast, saying that we're not experts. Right. No, pronunciation and- was one of the things, though. We pronounced someone's name wrong, and it annoyed him so much he didn't get past the first five minutes. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, oh! By the way, the uh, the I Ireland um, iTunes reviews for Black Dog, uh, we got a one star review, and someone left it, and it said it sounds like a load of guys talking about films down the pub. <laughs> That's not a bad idea for a podcast, podcast, you know. <laughs> do, you know do you know? Strangely enough, it sounded. I thought, yeah, fine, and then I looked when he when he or she looked at it, and it was actually a pubcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was one of the right? I think you need a right to reply on these one star reviews sometimes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Just to point these things out. Yeah, it's just like, hey, you looked on this day, and oh, you, that was the day the pubcast came out, which was actually surprisingly titled Pubcast. What's that series that Dom Jolly used to do? What? Um, uh, uh, oh. The God. one with the big phone. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I'm in the library. Jacker. Yeah, no, yeah, no it's not, a bit rubbish. Not, it's full of books. Not you phone, know that kind of thing. Not phone. Trigger jacket. happy Trigger, TV. Yeah. Trigger happy TV. Yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like the sort of review that that his character would yeah. leave, like yeah. stating the fucking obvious. Yeah, yeah. Shrobbing, I think that's also called. If Is you it? listen to Harmon Town, uh, where, yes. where Rob <laughs> Shrob calls up things and and basically states the fucking obvious and then asks it as a question. So yeah, it's the same thing. It's shrobbing. Like, yeah, shrobbing, okay. but. Fucking hell. It was like, what? Did you not listen to one before or one after or one that didn't have pod- pubcast in the kin title? Twat. I can imagine the review for the Irish pubcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my God, it sounds <laughs> These like... guys have ripped off the black dog. <laughs> Some guys talking down the pub. <laughs> about, guess it? about films. Oh no. <laughs> I bet we said at the start of the actual thing, hello, we're in a pub. Yeah, probably. Sounds like they're in a pub. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to put five stars because it was exactly what they said at the start of the podcast. So, yeah. 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 Five stars for accuracy. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, so so apart from having an utterly fake accent, Jim, what, how else is the rest <laughs> of your week been? Uh, well, uh, in, in better news, um, I bought some floating shelves. Nice. And uh, managed to put them put up four shelves using a hammer drill and drilling into brick and everything. And the house hasn't collapsed yet, or he's on fire. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's always noteworthy when one of us does some DIY without any major injury. Well, yes, I mean, I, I have, I have potentially some major, major works coming up for for my mum and dad's house, um, which I may be partaking in, which really? invo- involves um, repointing parts of the brickwork. So you've already chosen another like a home for them to go and live in after this event. Well, I take yeah, it. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, That's I, what, they're going to need something. I thought. I thought if I don't get, <laughs> if I don't get them out of this house soon, I won't. I will never inherit the fucking place. So uh, yeah, I, I figured, want the land. I'm, I just want the land. Just want the land. I'm going to build sixty five <laughs> flats on that fucking place. Yeah. Now anyway, so uh, yeah, but anyway, so okay, so you're living underneath your floating bookshelves, is what you're saying. 
Uh, pretty much, yeah, yeah, and everything's fine. <laughs> As they're battened the- for a dreadful creaking, that's the attempted fate. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say we're going to going to hear Andy getting basically punched to death by his wife. Um, we're going to hear you uh, under a collapsing shelf, and um, yeah, so uh, that's you know we're we're all gearing up for a sort of end of season finale here, aren't we? Uh, pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Game, Game of Thrones. Poor yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing on the black though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a bit of EastEnders at the end. Yeah, I'm just going to take this book off this shelf. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Well then, um, shall we move on to Mr. Elton then? Yes, that's probably a good uh, idea. Okie dokie. So, Elton, how are you, how's your um, Tam away been? <laughs> I've been trying to keep it quiet after all the drama that I've been going through recently, which is no disrespect to anyone else that's been going through massive drama. But when you're having little dramas, they seem to get upon you. So uh, I've been trying to keep it down. The doggy, I can't remember if we had this or not. He had his operation. Yes, he was having trouble weeing. Eh? We had the legs problem. Didn't he? Oh yes, yeah. But he's yeah, had his operation it. now, yeah, and he's well on the mend. He's trying to run about all over the place, and it's just me just saying, "Please sit down, just please sit down." <laughs> you cost please me how much? Yeah. yeah, please sit down. No, don't. Please sit down. Just please sit down. And yeah, that's rinse and repeat for that. That's what I've been trying to do. Apart from that, I'm off this week, enjoying hey. it. Tons of bits around the house and didn't die. So that's a thumbs up from me. And I have my thumbs to put them up. So that's Yay! good. No fingers, just the thumbs. Just thumbs and bloody stubs. Nice. Mm. Good work. Good work yeah. indeed. And that's it, is it? Yeah, that is it. I am honestly, I'm, well, I'm, I'm resisting going out and buying Red Dead Redemption 2. So I am still watching uh, Hell... Hell on Wheels, which yep. is getting me through, but I'm itching to get that game. I really badly want to buy that game, but yeah. I've put it on my list, and hopefully the kids will be getting it for me for Christmas. It's funny enough, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> mm. He's like, put it on the list, and then that way but, you, you can just don't get into it now. Well, yeah, that's the thing. that I know that if I'd had it now, I'd be in my pants right about now playing it oh, after turning around no, and no, saying no, to no, you guys no, no 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 get out of my head get out of my head <laughs> get out of my where's max von Sydow? we need him here the to do the power of christ the compels you in my in my tower of cliff compels you oh god i'd be sat in my tea stained pants with just a That's cowboy hat on and maybe a badge pinned somewhere and, a, and, a, and boots don't forget the cowboy and, and boots. boots yeah Spurs dug in somewhere. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, but luckily enough, I don't have it, so I, I'm not in that situation yet, just yet. Although I did learn mm. because I'll be getting on PlayStation Four, it's a hundred and five gigs. Yes, and so I'm going to have to clear out some stuff. It's mm. a big girl to go on there, yeah, and flip it over, and I'm going to have to clear out a lot of games. To, to fit that on there. Or you could just... Also, yeah. I realise I'm not going to be able to play it probably until Boxing Day. Because if I get it Christmas Day, that's going to be uploading all day. Well, you, you you do know you can get like an extra hard disk for your PlayStation 4, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got enough room. It's just the fact that it's got to get from the disks, because there's two disks, mm. onto the hard drive. And then it's got to have a patch as well. Don't forget oh, the patch. Yeah. There's seven patches, aren't there? Yeah. Do you but, know what? From what I've seen online, mm. you're not even going to have to play the the actual game itself. You could just go around looking at all the weird shit and all the funny shit that goes on in it. Did you see Jess's one that you posted up today? What, what goes on in Freetown stays in Freetown. Freetown yeah. yeah, strawberry. Goes oh, in strawberry. As it stays in strawberry. <laughs> Goes on the strawberry, stays in strawberry. Yeah, he was walking through town, and then he could just hear this noise coming through a through a cabin window. And he looked through the window, and there was a guy dressed as a baby being spanked by another lady. Yeah. And because the, there's four, there's two blokes standing outside a window laughing. And you walk up, and they see you, and go, "Oh fuck!" And they yeah. they scarper, 
Yeah. And your character goes, let's see what they've been laughing at. And there's a bloke dressed as a baby getting spanked by a prostitute. And then they both, <laughs> and if you get too close to the window, they notice you. And she runs over, pulls the curtains, and you hear this bloke going, don't you tell nobody or I'll kill you. She goes, thanks for the show, stranger. And then Sandra yeah. Adam. Yeah, Jess has been showing sharing a lot of that stuff on Facebook. Uh, the other one was when he opened the door in a sh- to a shed and there was like a 17-foot <laughs> bear, bear, in, bear, it. bear <laughs> in there. Just opened the door to this cabin and there was like a f- sort of six-foot bear and it just jumped on him. It was like, Fuck Last it. time I go to fucking Butlins, I'll tell you. Yeah. Stay in a chalet. <laughs> what? Anyway, so you should enjoy that. Just don't tell us that you're sitting in piss-stained yeah. pants in your cowboy hat and boots. Just, just don't, okay, just, I won't. No, just, but that's that's it, really. I'm just looking forward to getting that at some point, maybe playing it next year. I don't know. Playing it forever. Yeah, yeah that'll be it. Um, I think when I got GTA Five, the first thing I did was drive a bus. And so I'm wondering what I'll be doing on this for the first thing. Well, you've got to look after your horse a lot, apparently. And, you know, brush it and groom it and take it uh, for walks and shoe yeah. it and all that kind of Treat stuff. Treat it to dinner. Candle lit. Yeah, yeah. None of the, so none it's of a it. fucking Tamagotchi, is it? It is a bit. <laughs> Pretty there's, much. There's lots, of, there's lots of survival elements to it. Like, you have to keep yourself healthy and keep yourself fit and fed and all that kind of stuff as well. I can't do that in real life. It's going to be a short game for you then, mate. It is. I wouldn't bother how, down. I wouldn't how bother can down. I be expect to cook and... <laughs> look after myself I when I can't do it myself. I wouldn't bother sticking the second disc in, let's put it that way. I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, there you go. Well, that saved you 105 gig. Just, just yeah, go, that's good. Go play Assassin's Creed Odyssey instead. All right. Okie dokie. Well, then um, let's move on to you, Dal. Yes. Let's, let's move, move on, on to, on to me, shall we? Oh, it's all about you. Oh, God, it is all about me. Right, well, okay, then. Go on, then. What's your, what's your week been like? <sighs> Oh, it's going to be a big one. This is going to. Uh, no. uh, shall I just sit back? Because as soon as you start sighing like that, I feel like I need a cup of tea. No, it's it's just no. sod's fucking law. Okay. Okay. Plan a trip to go to a concert, right? Okay. Get the fellowship music. Okay. Plan a trip to go to a concert, <laughs> and it kind of just all blows up in your face. Oh God! Right. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. This is this is definitely... no. It's all right. It's not going to be any great lengthy journey or anything like that because it didn't turn into a journey. Did oh, you no. not get your boys' own tickets, Darren? No, I didn't. I had to go and see Bastard someone boys. else. I was really fucking pissed off. It was the it was the Spice Girls. Spice Girls, Spice Girls Brexit tour. No, yeah, yeah. Actually, it was the uh... Spice Girls. You pays for it. You Brexit tour. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was the Blazing Squad um, reunion concert. Uh, uh, Spice Girls, Brexit no, in. in. Uh, no, there, there were actually more Blazing Squad on stage than there was people in the audience because, <laughs> well, it's an eternal thing. It's like a fraternity of brothers. It's like fucking Rangers from Lord of the Rings. Right. Um, no, it's just. I'm, so it gets, it's getting near the end of the day, and I'm looking forward to going to this concert, right? Mm. Okay, I, I took yeah. an early day just to make sure I'm out of work. Um, with like time to spare, right. not a problem at all. Ree's just finishing up work, and I'm, yeah. I'm getting ready. I've got change, getting ready to go, <laughs> and and then I get a phone call. Yeah, right. Mm. Oh, I've got a text message. Mm. She said, "Can I call you?" Mm. I went, "Yeah, no problem. Call me." Mm. Turns out she's been let out of work early. Mm. Because yeah. she's done a back in. Oh, oh no. no! Yeah, because of the job she does, which is it's um it's an admin job, and she has to go around to schools with this bunch of nurses just to do sort of like mm. vaccinations for the kids. Yeah, they've given her this fuck ton of paperwork to carry around with her. Oh no! And she's got it in this bag, and it's just so heavy. It's put her back out. No. So I'm like, all right, well look. Take painkillers. As she goes, yeah, I'll get some stuff, put my back, and we'll just see how we fare later on. It's three o'clock in the afternoon when she tells me this, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's like, all right, well, let's just see how you are in a few hours. You might feel okay. Yeah. Right? You might yeah. be all right. It might be just that you've just done a little, you know, just twanged your back slightly and we'll be fine. Mm. No. Not no? at all. No. no. She's, I get home. She's laid out on the sofa flat. I'm like, how are you doing? She goes, I can't get up. Oh, no. So, again, a couple of hours before we 
we need to leave right before it starts getting so bad that we can't go mm. or so bad that you know we're not going to be able to make it and basically we just don't make the deadline well it's not a surprise and f- frankly it shouldn't have been yeah you yeah. should have just called it off right then and there if someone's laid flat out on the sofa mm. Well, she would know. She was really wanted to go, so it was like, all right. Well, let's see how we feel. You know, how mm. you doing in yeah. about an hour and a half? See how mobile you are, and and then it's like, no, with all the best will in the world, yeah. even if you could say like walk to the station and we got a train and that, you're not going to want to stand up for two hours at no. a concert. By no. the end of that, you are going to be completely and utterly fucked. That yeah. your back is going to be fit for not fit for purpose. So, um, wonder where you were going with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, getting on the way home, it's like yeah. you know, you know that the fucking deities in the universe don't want you to go to the concert because they start cancelling trains oh, for right. me to get back to where she is so I can help her. And like, oh, stuff man. gets delayed or overrun engineering works. Mm. It's just like, I'm, I'm, we're not going to go to that, are we? This is it. No. no. And so, we didn't. Right. And then on the weekend, mm. okay. we planned to go and see mm. right, the next Fantastic Beast movie. Okay. I went ill on Friday. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. It was all like fucking, I was just snot explosion, watery eyes, headache, achy limbs, everything. So I had to stay at home. Couldn't go out on the weekend. So that was fucked as well. Well, right. Okay. So, Jesus. I'm just not having much luck. No, it's because you're old. It's because I'm old. It's because we're all old. It's because I'm very old. Jesus. Very, very old. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> God bless you. The smell of piss is filling the air, but I'm not bringing it up. <laughs> Do you know when we finally made it out to do anything at all, any sort of leisure stuff? Mm-hmm was a trip to Waitrose on the Sunday. <laughs> was she in a wheelbarrow or something? <laughs> no, she was She was walking okay by then. So we it went, was playing there. And then we, we just went and got our <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Blazing Squad. <laughs> fucking Blazing Squad following us around everywhere. Yeah. There's okay. enough of them. New kids on the block were opening yeah. up the latest Waitrose. Yeah. We are the Blazing Squad and we are Legion. Yeah, yeah. so, um, uh, of course, no. A, a lot of people probably won't know who the fucking Blazing Squad are. Not even Blazing Including Squad. Blazing Squad. Yeah. <laughs> they were, oh, Jim. They were, they, were, they were a bunch, of, basically, they were a bunch of kids who, you know, came from, like, you know, you council estate background, <laughs> and I think it was the entire council estate that was the band. Because that's how many there were, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think they had, like, you know, they had them in test tubes or something ready to go because you killed one, and suddenly one replaced it. Yeah. You know? It was like like gremlins. You or fed like them off. Hydra. Fed, you know? them, fed them after midnight. There was, like, three more later. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even remember. I, does anybody know the name of any one there of was, the Blazing Squad? There was Weezy Pew, Pew, Barney McGrew, Pew, Cuthbert Pew, Little Grub. Grub. There we go. There was, there was Wizzy Bang. Wizzy Bang. And, and Farty G. Farty G. <laughs> and there was Fucky Wawa. <laughs> and there was Doofy Wang Bang. And then let's not forget Fuzzy Wuzzy. And Fatang Yang Kipper Bang. And then there was also Diz Bang. And there was Clusto Fidge Banger. Yeah. There? And then there was... Then there was Gapy McArsebum. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then there was um, Long Wu Jar Jar. Yeah, then there, there was there was Holy Tongue Bomb. And don't forget And George. And yeah. George. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the firebrand of the group. Of yeah. George. Yeah. Oh. Al, uh, Albert. Albert, him. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise known as Flatty Cappy. Yeah. Mm. I remember them days. Oh, them was what the days. But anyway, getting back mm. to what oh, I did. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, get, uh, 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 uh. yeah, yeah, go on. Um couple of things mm. sat down with uh maria and we watched the new she-ra that okay. they just brought out on netflix the, mm. the re the redone she-ra which yes. is actually pretty good right no 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 darren, darren what? No. can't just say pretty good it's not allowed why isn't it well apparently on twitter it's the best thing ever you cannot tell you anything about it it's the best 
Right, okay. Well, it was good, you know. No, no, right. it's the best. It's good. No, it. no, there is no, there was no discussion yeah. or argument. It no, must be the best. But, it is the best thing ever, but, ever since the license, since the dawning of time. Am I not allowed to say? <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a bit hot fuzz there, Lee. A little bit. I don't go in there. No dragons be there. No, no, for the greater good. No, no, you can't just. You can't for the greater just, good. All right, I enjoyed Yarp. it. No, 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 you can't say you enjoyed. It has to be more. It's gonna be the best thing. It changed my life. Yeah, no more. 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 It changed my ancestors' life. People yes. who weren't even uh, not alive now. Yes. It changed my opinion on shitty modern animation styles. Yes, everything. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, you know, quite enjoyed it. No. Oh God. Got anyway, it. moving on from that. <laughs> and Maria enjoyed it so much. She went because mm. I. Yes. Follow, I was thrown from that in the same listing. There's the old She-Ra. Okay. And so um, she, I said, well, there's another 65 episodes of this. Do you want to see it? Because, you know, yes. give it a go. Mm. And she went, oh, yeah, all right, let's have a look at that. I said, ah, but before you watch the first episode of She-Ra, you've got to at least watch one episode of He-Man so you know who He-Man is. And we only need to watch one episode of He-Man. Because you've seen them all. Exactly, because one episode... <laughs> Is every episode of E-Man. And I don't yeah, care. Yeah, He-Man. He-Man. Yeah. And what we, what we learned. You're so money supermarket. We certainly are. <laughs> um, and what we've learned from that is that all bad guys in He-Man are very, very happy people. Because they laugh for absolutely no fucking cunting reason whatsoever. Like, <laughs> Beast I've man. got piles. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's like... Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so they always laugh. They they pronounce they 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 give their intentions across to do something like I'm going down to Tesco's for a pound of spuds. Ha ha ha. Yes. And they'll just laugh. Yeah. They just at the end of everything. Yeah. Yes. No fucking bonkers reason whatsoever. No. But I think what a lot of people forget is that He Man was a big pile of shit. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Honestly, it's like, oh, God, this is going to put her off. But no, she got through the event and we started watching She-Ra. And we mm. had a lot of fun actually fight, seeing where the new stuff had got its inspiration for certain characters. And you see how they've changed. And we're like, every time we saw one, we recognised it. Ah, look, it's that one. So mm. it was good. We we had fun going back and looking at the old She-Ra, which I must say is actually a slightly better cartoon than He-Man. Mm. Okay. Then the old one, that yep. is. It had an actual story out the first four episodes. Mm. But everybody in Eternia has to have a funny fucking voice. Even She Ra has a funny voice until she go, you know, um, Adora, as she's called that, has a, has a slightly iffy voice just before she becomes She Ra. And then her voice doesn't become much better. Mm hmm. You know, like Prince Adam, uh, yeah. and he always talked like this. And then when he's He-Man, he <laughs> talks very... His balls drop. <laughs> yes. yes, by the testes of Grayskull, clang. <laughs> I've hit puberty. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> Every every everybody in fucking mm. Eternia or Etheria has to have a funny fucking voice. Right, the only one that hasn't got a funny voice is like Hordak, who's who's Who? who's Shiraz, so like chief bad guy, who you find out later on in that Fuck episode. Skeletor. Yeah, who was Skeletor's boss? Oh right, and then he kind of <laughs> fucked off from Eternia because they tried to take over Eternia at one point. Yeah, and he kind of just fucking he left Skeletor behind to do the job. I think Skeletor lost his train ticket or something. He, Look at you. He got to platform nine and three quarters and couldn't fuck off to Etheria with Hordak. Okay. Um, you had one job, Skeletor. Exactly. Yeah. One job. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Skeletor, you're supposed to I have taken... know it was a super saver day. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to take over Castle Grayskull. Why are you doing a song and dance number in a bar? Yes. Why are you in a snake mountain when you're a skull? And he man's in a castle with a skull on it. What is? I I don't understand. I've got. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm not following this at all. Someone appears to have mixed up the back plates. Yes. Uh, oh, shit. Because 
you were called Skeletor before you became a skeleton as well. Yes. Because I've seen that 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 episode. Off-cut episode that they've never actually really published. And when He Man bends over, I can see his snake mountain. I can, yes. <laughs> in that fucking in that fucking strange leotard thing he's wearing. It's like a boa constrictor. <laughs> no, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Just one other thing I've seen this week. Um after after um, He Man Snake Mountain. After He Man Snake Mountain. Um, <laughs> title of the episode. Title definitely. of the episode. Yes. Uh I saw a new thing on Netflix, uh, by the Cohen brothers called The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I'm Buster Scruggs. Bust, yes. I've seen the whole <laughs> thing. The ballad now. Buster Rhymes, thankfully. Yeah, it's not, no. <laughs> uh, basically it's uh it's an anthology movie. There's six stories in it, and they're all set in the old west. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've given a, they've all been all the stories have been given a sort of slightly Coen Coen Brothers <laughs> sort of slant yes. on it. Um, I have to say, after watching it, the first three stories in it I thought were good. Mm. Um, my favourite is the very first one, the actual titular story, uh, the oh, Battle of the Buster Scruggs. Scruggs. That is. That's just brilliant. I love mm. it. It's it's just quirky enough for me to get on with it. Yeah. And it's just the the gunfighting in it, brilliant. The mm. Buster Scruggs himself, I just love that character. Mm. Um it yeah. Well they wrote that bit of the script eleven years before the film was made. Did they? For that bloke, for Tim Blake Nielsen. Oh man. I could have done with it being about twenty minutes longer, mm. to tell you the truth. I would love for it to be that long. For me, I think it's about 15 minutes long, that, mm. that first story. And it for me, it's not long enough. No. It, just, it just needs to be more. I would love to see more of that character doing its thing. Oh, right. Okay. You know, so yep. uh, going around that world and yep. whatever. You, and yep. The soundtrack is great as mm. well. I love the music in it, especially for that episode. Yes. You know, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I may invest in the soundtrack. Nice. Um, and it's got some. It's got some big names. It's got uh, Liam Neeson's in one. Yeah. As well, uh, James Franco, mm. isn't it? Um, and also uh, we also have um, uh, Glendon Fraser. Is it Glen? Brendan. Bren- Brendan. No, Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson yeah. is uh, is in another one. And also Tyne Daly from Cagney and Lacey. Yeah. Is in one, as well. So um, I would say it's about 50% of it is really, really good. Mm. And then I think it's not a, so much. It's the Tom. It's from the Tom Waits episode or some Tom Waits story onwards. It kind of slants mm. a bit. Yeah. The very last one's a little bit spooky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'd say very well done. Mm. Enjoyed it. Kept me watching it. But there were some stories that were a bit longer than they should have been mm. like take some off of the 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 tom white story about 15 minutes off of that and stick it on the buster, the buster scruggs <laughs> sorry yeah. give them some strepsils yeah <laughs> i'll have a packet of tom uh, whites and 20 20 players other. 20 players uh, just going down the stairs well, i'll tell you what after watching it actually I've got i to just call to see i love you <laughs> if they ever remake paint your wagon then Tom Waits is a shoe in for the fucking Lee Marvin role in yeah. that. He could just do Wandering Star justice, no problem. No. I was born. <laughs> it's like his voice is so low, Lee Marvin, in that song, that, that fucking Doug McClaw and Peter Cushing at the centre of the earth suddenly <laughs> stop and go, what the fuck is that? Is that, is that is that Lee Marvin? <laughs> oh, <can hear>. Yeah, <laughs> it's the caverns of the yeah, warlords of Atlantis of Valley oh, Break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he makes he makes fucking Barry White sound like Alan Jones in that. He yeah, really does. It does. It's like I don't know the different levels of sound. Mm. And he goes yeah. into a certain spectrum there that were, normal were, people can't hear. Sending bats into walls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just, <laughs> there's like there's like beings on other planes of existence that are huh? Well huh? hold on. They found us. <laughs> he started an uprising in one dimension. That's how low his voice is. <laughs> but uh yeah, so there we go. That was me, that's my week. Sort of Okay. Well mine's relatively quick. Um been having all sorts of 
Oh, I've heard. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Um, <laughs> ah. Good day, even. Um, I started watching The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Hey, you're fine. I'm that? liking that. Yeah. I do like that. I'm hearing it's, a lot of good things about it's, it. It's interesting because I wasn't a super fan of the um, of the film when when we watched it for Black Dog because I just thought of, felt like it wasn't it wasn't quite what I was expecting, if you know what I mean. It was, uh, I don't know, I can't go back on that. But anyway, but what's really interesting about this is it feels like, it feels like a novel. Mm-hmm. It feels like the whole thing is just one big story, nicely contained. There's no, there's none of this kind of, ooh, something else is going to happen at the end of season one or, you know, any of this kind of thing. It feels like a big contained story. There are some, if if you don't like, it, well, it's, it's got a little bit of, um, was it ghost watch going on with lots of sort of like you know things are happening and you'll sort of like think hang on was that ooh, that right. was a thing good i like that kind of yeah. horror yeah lots of lots of odd shapes standing stuck still down the end of corridors and shit don't tell me no more no it's it's good I, i'm i'm enjoying it i'm yeah. i mean there's there's one episode which has like an enormously single take shot which, funny enough, we're going to have to talk about here mm. in this film, but it's just like how they did it was just like fucking amazing. I mean, I don't know if it was clever edits or moving shit around while this poor guy on a steady cam ran around. I don't know what it was, but it was just like after a while you sort of go, they're going to cut this any second. They're going to, yep. nope, no, nope, still going on. Oh, this is bloody hell. And it's kind of sad because you kind of almost get distracted by that, but I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm also watching. Uh, I'm also f- try, trying to power through the good place, which I'm I'm still enjoying. Um, what else did I watch? Um, I've started watching Star Wars Rebels season four. Yay! Hey! There you go. Um, and also, um, yeah. And then I played a little bit of Red Dead Redemption four um, on the play. Sorry, Red Dead Redemption on the PlayStation four for about five minutes uh, when Jess came around. Was that um, character creation? No, no, it was just 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 riding about, but apparently, just riding about seems to involve the button to make your horse go faster mm-hmm. is also the button to punch people in the face, <laughs> um, which is kind of a bit weird. So you be up, punch. No, it is. It, there is moments like that where you kind of like it. The context between where your character is mm-hmm. and what your character is doing and what you want to do, the game kind of doesn't sort of decides for you so you press the button and it'll like instead of you know someone's going help me help me and you ride over and you go don't worry ma'am i'll and you pull a gun and immediately shoot her in the face (laughs) it's like (laughs) don't worry ma'am i'll put you out of your misery exactly it's like oh for fuck's sake um and also the amount of times i've been killed by my own cocking horse is not even funny (laughs) really (laughs) yeah well the thing is in a in a in a a, a nod to a nod to realism. A nod to realism. Get off your horse. Walk round the back of the horse. Bad move. Because you know yeah. what that horse is going to do? Going to kick it, you. You kick you. And you know what it did? It kicked me right off a fucking cliff. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> I'm standing by the cliff edge. I'm thinking, oh, isn't this a lovely vista? I jump off the horse. I walk round the back of the horse. The horse gets spooked. It kicks kicks me off the cliff, knocks my hat and me cut everything. All my change goes up in the air, and I disappear over the edge of a cliff. There's a cowboy boot full of shit. <laughs> and my hat just comes floating down. Anyway, yeah, so I did that. Um, and then the last bit, what last thing I've done this week, um, was I finally hit the end of my running club thing. I did a graduation run. And I did 5K, and I did wow. it in 29 minutes. Well done, sir. Well go. done. Very well done. Making five minutes, I think it's five minutes and 50 seconds for a kilometre, to run a kilometre. That's really good. So I did that. So yeah, so there you go. And um, yeah, that was good. So I lost a little bit of extra weight, and I went and bought myself um, went and bought myself some jeans. Uh, another size down from where I was before. Wow. Yay! So there you go. So yes, so basically, I'm wasting away. <laughs> I'm now, I'm now, I'm now a character from Stephen King thinner. I'm now yep. disappearing, and so when I finally vanish, you know, just carry on without me. Be like this wisp. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a gust of wind, and he was gone. <laughs> um, 
that's about it, really. Um, yeah, draw doing CGI lorries and and that's about it, and and work and work, of course, work. Right. <sighs> oh, there you go. Vip, vip. Vip, vip. Yeah, got to make sure I've got to keep an eye on that because if the vip vip suddenly from my phone is something to do with hospital, I have to uh, hang up the podcast, which will be uh, rather awkward in the middle of the thing. But let's not worry about that right now because I'll tell you what, let's have a nice... Oh, that's one other thing I did. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I did, I watched Teen Titans the movie. Teen How Titans it? Go. It's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah? It is really funny. I shall have to if you I'll want, If you want... A Deadpool, but for kids. Yeah. But not for kids because the animators and the story writers know what they're doing. Yes. Check it out. Teen Titans. Did this have Stan Lee's last cameo? What? No, no. Teen Titans Go has got. Um, it does have. Well, it does have Stan Lee in it. But the thing was, um, it's also. Um, it's no, Stan, Stan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's still in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that gives you a sort of measure of where the humour is. But um, but he's he's a cameo. Um, he's ha- he actually has already filmed prior to his death. Um, a filmed cameo for the the Avengers Four and Captain Marvel. So Captain Marvel. Oh, I, I know he's got stuff like lined up. But I thought that was the last one which came out prior to his death, which I thought had it was kind of. It was kind of fitting that he transcended so far that his last cameo was a cameo of his cameos in a non-Marvel film. Yeah, yeah. And it, I can't like uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if Teen Titans came out before or after Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think it came out after. Which one? At Teen least in the UK, it definitely did. Yeah, well, okay. Well, maybe maybe something to, to look for, look in on the old Wikipedia and find out. Sorry, what? Whether Ant-Man and the Wasp and Teen Titans go, which one came out? Oh right, okay. Last, I he think was... it's Teen Titans that came out last. Yeah. Well, it's it. Anyway, all, all I'm saying is you don't need to have seen the cartoon all the way through, you know, Cartoon Network or any of that stuff. But if you want that sort of knowing fourth wall breaking humor of sort of Deadpool, mm-hmm. then definitely check it out. It's got a lot of that stuff, and it has Nicolas Cage as Superman. Oh, so I've heard. Yes, sold. Sold. That's it. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> it's it's very. Oh, 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 it just reminded me of something I was going to say earlier, but mm-hmm. I forgot. Go oh, on, damn it. Go on, go on, go on. Because we're going oh, go very quickly, very very quickly. Darren gave us a. He mentioned it previously. Don't, Batman Ninja. Don't 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 go there. I've got to say, he gave us this beautiful rundown of the first twenty minutes when we were in the he, pub, and yeah. we were listening to this. Right. Like a gasp. We're like, there's no way this is right. He's he's exaggerating. He's it, 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 there's no way this is right. So obviously we went and watched it, and oh my god, he was point for point perfect, and he still checked out before he got even more insane. Yeah, I just I, have two words for you, monkey sidekick. Don't fucking no, I'm sorry, it's bollocks. That fucking film is bollocks. <laughs> Batman fucking ninja, what? Fuck off. Fuck yeah, 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 yeah. You could be a ninja as well with forty thousand billion quid's worth of equipment that suddenly fucking well turns up out of a fucking time warp with you back in ancient feudal Japan. Oh look, Batman. Oh look, Alfred's turned up with a fucking Batmobile four hundred years ago. Really, <laughs> Alfred? What are you doing here? Oh, I was in the Batmobile. Really? What were you hiding in the fucking glove compartment? Because I didn't fucking see you turn up. Because I was How driving much is the bastard to, thing to sponsor a film for the Patreon Lee? Um, we haven't that 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 Patreon option has has been closed um, for this year, but we will okay. uh, re reopen it uh, in January. But um, yeah, I don't know because because I honestly also... honestly right my review right yeah. okay that was angry yeah if I have to watch the entire thing yeah. as I said to Andy at the time yeah. <laughs> half the life in the universe will fade away as ash. That's what it will be like. It will be the equivalent of, the of snap. Thanos clicking his fingers. Yep. Right? All things in balance. Yeah. As it All things be. in balance. If I have to watch the rest of that piece of bullshit. Right? Sh- shall, I, shall I watch it for you? Shall I, shall I have a little look I at it? I don't think you should. No? No. Is it? Is it no. That? He, the, armed, the armed police force around here haven't got enough bullets. <laughs> 
Take right, in their down. arsenal to take you down. <laughs> Just the last shot of me running down the road stark yeah. naked with like 20 tasers hanging out on me or something. Right? And I, <laughs> I want to get tickets to the Brian Blessed thing that's happening here next year in Bromley. I'd like to be able to see it, but if you watch this thing, I don't think they'll have the Churchill Theatre repaired in time. <laughs> For that production in April of I, next year. I am genuinely curious now. Don't. Please. That's don't. why we watched it. Don't go there. <laughs> don't do this to yourself. You know, there's a scene, right, in The Crow, right? Oh, the Crow graphic novel, yeah. right? Yeah. Where uh, the I think he's going off to try and to go back into his past to see what happened with him and his girlfriend. Yeah. And The Crow says to him, right, says to Eric Draven, or it's the gunslinger, the ghostly yeah, yeah, gunslinger yeah, yeah, yeah. says, don't do it, lad. Yeah. I'm giving you the same advice as the gunslinger. Don't do it, lad. <laughs> You're my ghostly gunslinger. I'm your you? ghostly gunslinger. <laughs> don't do it. sidekick. Don't do it, lad. Don't do it. Yeah, you see, because the thing Everything is... turns into a fucking robot. <sighs> okay? No, I'm, I'm not shitting you. I really? shit you not, right? Okay? Yeah. I don't care if I spoil this for people, right? I really don't. This is one of those <laughs> things where I've been insulted enough. Right? Okay. So Batman turns up, right, yeah. in feudal fucking Japan 400 years ago because yeah. for some reason, Killer Crocs pulled a fucking time device out of his. No, no, it's Grod. <laughs> Grod. Grod the Gorilla. It's, it's Gorilla Grod, yeah. Yeah, Gorilla Grod has pulled a time device out of his fucking monkey ass, right? Okay. <laughs> and he, it opens with this. It opens like fucking two seconds getting near the end of a battle. Right. This thing, right? You don't know what the fuck is going on. Right. It's just. All of a sudden, Gorilla Grodd, for some reason, has hooked up this time device in at the top of Arkham Asylum, which is now like uh, the fucking Blackpool Tower. Apparently, that's oh. what that's that's Arkham Asylum now, right? Right. Okay, and it, it fucking sends everyone back, yeah. right, four hundred years into feudal Japan. 1600 right. Japan. Yeah, something like that, right? Or whenever it was, if they, if, when the it was like there were no, uh, or there were only, um, you know, Samurai. religious, uh, was it, the pilgrims coming over from the West into Japan. Okay. Right? okay so there's Polo like, you know, and Samurai and stuff, stuff yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right? Okay. Everybody goes back to then, right? Mm. And I mean, I'm talking everybody from the fucking Joker to Deathstroke, right? Commissioner Gordon. This now, this is all done, <laughs> Uncle Tom Gobbling. This is all done in anime, right? Okay, King this, is, this is this is sort of King Tut, the Eggman. It's that very anime ish <laughs> sort of you know animation. Um, lots of people doing over the top voices, especially the Joker, right? It's just, it's like as if somebody's uh, taken all of the shit I hate about anime and just yeah. boiled it down and condensed it into a tablet and, s- and said, take this. And it's inflated itself. I've taken the tablet and it's inflated itself like one of those fucking emergency life rafts you get on fucking battleships. You know, the ones you throw and they just fucking automatically inflate. It does that and yeah. it just releases everything into you. There, there, is, there, is, there is a magnificent moment when uh, all of a sudden these samurai approach Batman just as he's landed in full samurai regalia with Joker masks on their faces. Yeah. And he stands there. A guard goes, who sent you? Who is your master? And I had to think, world's greatest detective. Should have got the gentlemen. fucking spec savers. <laughs> oh, no. That's where he should have gone. Because yeah. what he fucking needs, he needs a new fucking prescription if you can't see your fucking mask. <sighs> right. But as crazy as everything Darren has said here is accurate, 100% accurate. It's bullshit. As crazy as that is, it gets crazier. Everything turns into a fucking robot, right? No, it's, it does that thing <laughs> that the Power Rangers used to do, yeah. right? Okay. Where I've, I've probably already talked about this, where you know yeah. in the Power Rangers, yeah. where they 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 they're getting defeated, and all of a sudden they press a button and they turn into super ooper duper Rupa robot, right? Yeah. Okay, that's really thing, and then all of a sudden the bad guy pulls something out of its ass that defeats that, and then they reach over, pull out a packet of polos, and they activate the super duper ooper duper 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 robot with a hat on, with a hat on, yes, right? okay, that it does that. Oh, God. This is everything, right? Okay, Batman is speeding towards the Joker's base, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. in his Batmobile, right? Yeah. Which Alfred has kept... Because this, this is two years after everyone else has fucking landed there. Batman suddenly fucking shows up, right? Okay, for some reason. For, for reasons, right? Reasons. Batman just appears. Right. right. Two years after every fucker has got there beforehand, right? Right. 
Alfred tells him, your Batmobile's here. I've made a sort of Batcave and I've kept the car maintained for two years. It's like, really? So there's like a fucking quick fit <laughs> in feudal Japan, is there? <laughs> yeah? Is that right? Fucker. How do you make petrol in so, feudal Japan? One, you 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 were in the glove box and now you're in you've just kept the car maintained with what? Bam fucking boo. Is that what you've done? Is that what you've used? <laughs> Rice wine. And and fucking noodles or something. I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> is that what it's powered? Yeah, rice wine. This is it. It's is that what it's powered by now? So anyway, Batman's speeding towards the Joker's castle, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, oh, how did he get here? And that's how the Joker speaks. Oh, no. Right? He's like, <laughs> in fact, they've got subtitles. You can't understand what he says. He's like, <laughs> right. Right? That's, what, that's how the Joker sounds. That's, oh, that's how he God. sounds in my head. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. So, <laughs> yeah. And it's underneath it says, oh, how how the fuck is that happening? Well, like, I do declare. It well, looks I do like declare. This the Dark Knight has arrived. How is he arriving in his in his, his parabolating vehicle or whatever it is he calls it? <laughs> and so Harley Quinn goes. Maybe we should we should go ahead and and like throw the switch on. Oh no, he says to her, throw the switch on the device or some bullshit. And she goes, but it's not ready. And he goes, and <laughs> so she's like, yeah, good idea. Let's do that and it turns into optimus prime his castle turns into optimus prime right 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 now batman is in all his armor right this is jumping yeah. to another yeah. scene right he, yeah. get, he manages to get inside optimus prime and when he lands in oh, there said harley quinn for a minute though. This, is, this is just <laughs> as i switch it off <laughs> sold yeah this is just like i switch it off right yeah. okay bane shows up what as a samurai yeah. As, a, as a sumo wrestler. Sumo. Right? Okay, sumo as a wrestler. sumo, right? Now, what that was, okay, I'm as he appears... one of those headaches. He knows yeah. that... He, uh, suddenly, mm. suddenly, Batman turns into Optimus Prime because apparently inside that suit, right, contains another 18 foot <laughs> of battle suit that he hasn't fucking engaged before this. But because somebody's turned up as a bit more powerful, suddenly he's got the ability to pull this shit out. Again, there's a lot of arse pulling going on in this, right? A lot of things being pulled out of people's asses, right? Batman they're like goes fucking, a lot of bleeding. They're like medicine bags, these things. <laughs> Batman goatsy. Batman goatsy, yeah. Right. Which is actually quite appropriate, seeing as the mask that Bane wore in <laughs> Batman <laughs> Rises Some Bread... Yeah, whatever it was dark, called, the dark, dark night, night, the dark night rises. That dark, yeah. the dark night's yeast, yeasty bread rises. Yeah, right? dark Which, night in fiction. Exactly, it's about Bruce Wayne buying a fucking bread maker or something. But in that game, that gains gains, but Bane's mask looks like a goatee. goatee. Does so. There's the link. There's your. There's, there we go. It's one for you, film lovers. Don't um, Google goatee. Don't, don't don't just don't don't just don't. Oh, Mister Word. So, join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we'll actually be doing a review <laughs> of Children of Men. Because, yeah. I, of what time is it now? Two in the morning? There we go. Sorry, I've we gone could, off we one. Could, we could have just watched Batman Ninja. We, we probably will. Well, actually, there's nothing now. in the... I was going to actually speak to you guys off air, but there's nothing in for next week for 381. Is this, is this, oh no, don't. Don't do this to me. Do it. Do it. Absolute fucking fuck. <laughs> I've done it yet. <laughs> fuck, you know, I can see the cogs moving in your fucking eyes. And it's on Netflix as well. I I'm know. just saying, you know. I know. I'm not saying. I'm not saying anything. No, yet. so do you think? No. <laughs> Gosh, golly! I thought it just entered my head. <laughs> let's just let's maybe have a little discussion off air before I I commit to that because it sounds like everything I hate about anime in a nutshell. Oh, it make me. It actually made me violent. Watching it made me violent. Right? Wow! Like just Twilight all over it. again. It yeah. is. It just. It made me so angry just watching it. Twiglet, let's yeah. not have a let's not have a repeat of Twiglet. There's not enough tequila. I, I've no. I'm, I've been losing weight. I can't drink that much tequila no. again. Let's not go there. Let's no. not go there. We did we did two bottles of tequila between three of us. Did we? 
Yeah, and on that episode, <laughs> on that episode, you're going to need more than that for this. I'll tell you that now. Yeah. To swallow this, right? You are going to need an ocean liner's worth of fucking mustard to to consume that ham. <laughs> you really are, yeah. right? Batman Brazzers. You're going to need some mustard <laughs> to swallow that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's the title of the episode. You know, I've, I've warned you, okay? okay? I've told you not to go down the dark <laughs> okay. path, but you are determined to do this. I'm not. Aren't you? Not. Yoda, Yoda. You're only taking with you. I only see what you're taking with you. Ah. I'm not. I see I'm Pringles. Yeah. You're no. pawn in the dark tree, you sick. Mm? What do you have against watching this shitbox of a movie? Mm? I have not decided to watch it yet. I know that there is a gap for 381, see, though. I can see, though, you're dying to do it. And he'll Stop be going like, why it. did I watch this? And I'll be going, because I told you not to. I can't help myself. I need <laughs> help. I need my pain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Right. And if anything which makes you quote Star Trek Five is never good. No, I was going to say, I, uh, you were the only one who was going to pick that one up, but, you know. Yeah. Bullshit. Uh, it's absolute bullshit. It's just fucking shit. It okay. Is fucking shit, shit. Fucking shit. <laughs> it's the shit that a shit would do. <laughs> okay. Shit, shit, shit. If shit could do a shit, it would, this would be the produce of it. This would be, it would shit out Batman fucking Ninja. Right. Okay, I, I'm taking that warning, and we are not doing it. Good. It's a patronising piece of shit. It really is. It's just... This week. <gasps> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Let, but now you're in the mood to discuss films, let's have a look at Children of Men. <laughs> Think back to the films you remember as good Ones you haven't viewed in a while How the story rocked and the actors were great The camera work had flair and style What would happen now if you watch them today? Are they still as fresh as before? Or do they stink as bad as a piss-covered tramp Leave you screaming on the floor? You know it can be real sad Find that special film is bad Wish you just left it a pleasant memory Now it's time for rose tint specs on Black Dome Watching movies from the past you thought were great Yes, it's time for rose tint specs on Black Dome Send your feedback in and tell us how they breathe. <laughs> right, okay, welcome back. Children of Men, yes. So, Children of the Men is the 2006 British-American dystopian thriller film directed and written by Alfonso Cuaron. Who based on a screenplay based off of a uh, P. D. James m- novel of the same me- same name. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, starring Clive Owen, um, and he says, "Oh yeah, Julianne Moore for an extended cameo, Claire Hope Ashley, uh, Michael Caine, Paul Marfinger, Chitwell Ejiofor, um, Pam Ferris, Charlie Hunnam, Hunnaman, Hunnaman." Um, it pretty much unrecognisable, um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, I had a budget of seventy six million, and it was released in September um, two thousand and six, and it made how much, Elton? I reckon it broke even. Uh, okay, so you reckon it made what seventy million or seventy six million? Seventy six. Okay, uh, Darren, how much you reckon? Hmm. Well, I can't actually say the same just... as Elton. I'll say 80 million. Okay. And Jim? 120 million. Okay. And uh, Andy? I'll go with... I'll go with 70. 
says the man looking at the Wikipedia. <laughs> I was only going with 70 because you said 70 when Elton suggested it. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, he did. It made $70 million. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff about the themes on the wiki. Um, not a lot about the actual production. Um, lo- lots of themes, which, which I won't get into because there's very little point because we will be discussing the film. Um, yeah, it was a, adapted uh, from the P.D. James novel. Um, Quaron did not begin production immediately on the, on the thing because he was directing Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And if you recognize Quaron's name, it's also because he directed Gravity. Ooh. Um, it's uh, yeah. He, um, basically, Quaron used the film Battle of Algiers as a model for social reconstruction and preparation in preparation for production, and presented the film to Clive Owen as an example of his ch- vision for children of men. Um, yeah, the locations. Um, the the Clockwork Orange was an inspiration for this beautiful, uh, this futuristic yet battered uh, twenty twenty seven London. Um, and it was the second film that Quaron actually made in London. Um, the yeah, the the film is n- re- uh, sort of notable for a uh, nine, 199 seconds single shot um, in which um, Key gives birth, um, and the 247 second shot, which is the ambush on the country road. Um, and these shots were the f- first of their kind. Um, and were um, influences on shots that, like, um, for example, in War of the Worlds, when you go around the Tom Cruise one, when it goes round around the car. But this, these shots were so well constructed because they were actually physically done as opposed to um, CGI, though there was some CGI actually in it. Um, as with all the best CGI, it's the stuff you don't see. Yeah, it was things like taking out reflections and taking out the mirror, the rear view mirror, mm. because there was a cameraman there. Um, and stuff like that. The, but it was a good enough shot that it's actually taught in film schools, that shot. Mm-hmm. Wow. So there you go. Um, do, 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 and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like um, it, it, it was a full-blown single shot, but it was the way it was mixed together. It was kind of still trickery, it, but it was... There's, there's some really good making of videos on YouTube, uh, which you can just google and search and it shows like the car rig they had for those bits yeah which is fascinating to look at and um it goes into detail on some of those i highly recommend even if you don't have the blu-ray just check them out on youtube because they're really interesting mm. yeah um uh yeah pd james himself uh, himself himself is it herself. herself i was gonna say it's her wasn't it um was reported to be pleased with the film when they saw it um and yeah and when the film was awarded the 19th annual USC Scripters Award for screen adaptation. Um, there's lots of awards. It's won. I won't go into all of them, and I won't go into the critical reception because, frankly, that's going to just rehash what we've already going or we're about to say. So there you go. So um, we do have the guest, um, and so the guest can go first with what they thought about Children of Men. So, Andy, what did you think of the film? Oh, thank you very much for that. Um, what do I think of the film? I need to first acknowledge that this is a very, very good film. It is a yes. fantastic film. Uh, I, I struggle to say it's a film I enjoy because I don't know if it's the kind of film you're supposed to enjoy, given the themes. Um, mm. Yeah, A lot of time when we look at films, we, we, we look at them and we say they haven't aged particularly well. This one's aged a bit too well. Yeah. It's, it's become a bit too... Uh, prescient in some of its themes and <laughs> the way things are constructed and presented. Mm, just and I just want to apologise to everyone listening because this is likely to get slightly political. Mm. It, just the nature of it. But mm. when when you see the London that is presented there, and this is a city I've lived in almost all my life, I recognise this city. And 10 years ago, I looked at it and I thought, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's bleak. You know, let's let's make sure we don't do that. And, you know, out today in a cold, wintry sort of uh, day out there and you're looking at stuff and it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it's the old joke of 1984. It's a warning, not a instruction manual. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think this is a fantastically well-constructed film. Uh, everyone knows I'm a massive fan of Blade Runner. Uh, and I believe uh, Alfonso Cuaron, he wanted this film to almost be the anti-Blade Runner. 
Mm. Whereas Blade Runner is lots of high technology and stuff like that and, you know, interesting use of lights and camera angles to create a very stylistic looking one. This is stylistic in entirely the other direction. There's almost no lighting setups for a lot of the stuff. It's all natural light, which I yeah. think it, it adds to that kind of bleakness you have there. It just feels grey. Mm. You know, you know what? It, it's, it's got that thing going on about it. And the way these shots are kind of set up and constructed, um, it's just the opening shot with, you know, in the from a coffee shop, there's, there's a lot more long tracking shots from the couple that you said at the beginning, which... Mm. When you first watch it, you don't realise it. It's only on repeated viewings you suddenly notice. The first shot is a solid shot from the coffee shop when he's getting his coffee, walking out, yep. you know, stopping the point of whiskey to the bomb going off. Um, mm. That's just one shot. No cuts, no takes or anything around that. It's just really, really... You've just got to admire the skill and technique that's gone into that mm. when you know how much work's involved to get that and doing it all in camera. Mm. Uh, you know, you mentioned those long tracking shots like the the car one and everything that's going there. It, it when that first dropped, I was going, how, how? It's there's a there's a person where the camera is now, but now the camera's there and the person's yeah. back there, and it's 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 not CG like War of the Worlds. It's just moving the camera around. So so just as from a filmmaking standpoint, this film fascinates me, and that's before you even get into the themes and everything else that's going on there, which as I've already mentioned is so incredibly bleak. Mm. It, I, I know it has this this idea of hope, but mm. it really does... It, it feels almost like... It's, it's like you got to the bottle of the whiskey bottle and you've gone to pour it in and there's just not enough for a proper measure. So it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just not enough hope in there. It's so bleak. And I like... Mm. I, it, Darren, you know you love your shitty apocalypse seasons and all this. Yeah. This, this this is definitely an apocalyptic film, in my opinion. Oh, it, oh, it yeah. kind of ticks all the boxes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doesn't it just? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's not quite on the level of the road, but it's not far off. Um, <laughs> it's, on, it's on the road to the road. It's on the road to the road, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so there's lots of that. Uh, I, I just, one of the things I love with this film, and it's how little time they spend explaining everything to you and how much of it is... You just pick up from watching it. Mm. it it's, it's not... I, I know we made the joke earlier about sitting by the window expositioning. But yes. But aside from that, you can tell this is a totalitarian regime that are doing really horrible stuff just in the way the police are dressed in that opening shot with the big heavy stab vests and all those extra bits there. Mm. With uh, Jasper's wife, who is um, in a vegetative state or kind of locked in, and you see just papers saying that uh, MI5 denied torturing photojournalists and you know just little yeah. bits like that. So it's a film which repeated viewings are rewarded because there's so much more story which just isn't spoon-fed to you. Mm. And I really like that in a film. I like a film where I've got to watch it a couple of times to get the whole story there and to understand mm. that. Yeah. Uh, I think the performances are all fantastic. And I, I know there was some comment on Clive Owen could be a bit wooden, mm. Um but I, I don't think he was wooden. I think he, he came across as a, as a as a man who's just waiting to die. He's just, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to mm. I'm just gonna cruise along until... And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, his ex-wife or lover or what, mother of his child comes back into his life. Yeah. And he just kind of goes along for the motions at first because he wants some quick cash. And it's it's almost like his body's going forward before his mind really has a chance to catch up and say, wait a minute, let's think about what you're doing here. This probably won't end up well for you. Mm. Uh, and, and so there's lots of that. I, I, and I apologise, this is a bit jumpy all about um, That's okay. It's, it's, it, you know, I've, I've listened to enough Black Dogs. Acid flashbacks are all good. Uh, I love Michael Caine's performance. It's the least Michael Caine performance I think he's ever done. I, all the better for it. Mm. Um, I, I, just, I got a real kick out of him being that kind of a character. And I know he kind of modelled it a lot on John Lennon. And once you know that, you go, oh, yeah, actually, I can see that. Obviously, later John Lennon, not the early stuff. Mm. Um, and I like those little nods there. Um, yeah, but all in all, for me, this is just it's just one of those films where I can't watch it a lot because it, it, it gets dusty in places and not that kind of cathartic sort, more that kind of... There's the bit at the end when they're walking out with the baby down the thing and everyone's just stopping 
and the mm. music rises and they just, you know, there's someone blind there with a gut spilling out, but trying to touch the baby as it walks down the stairs. And then all the soldiers coming up and they just, everything just kind of stops. It's like a Renaissance painting in motion. Some of the way those shots are constructed. And it, it, mm. it's just the way it's all built to that kind of moment. And then there's a sudden release when someone fires a bazooka and it just, <laughs> off it goes again. I, I love the juxtaposition of those sort of moments mm. that's going on there. Yeah. This whole film is just a, it's a great stew of good cinematography, good writing, good acting, good direction. Just mm. it all comes together, and you just sit there and you go, "That is a good movie." Mm. Cool. And I think I'll probably leave it there because I I could keep talking for hours on this one. One mm. one one. I would just say one of the themes I, I definitely pick up at the beginning of this film is how everyone's just waiting to die. It's just that's just. They're just going through the motions. There's just there's no hope mm. in in the first two thirds of this film at all. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I have a point purely on that bit, but I, I'll get to that when it's my turn. But um, cool. Okay, so so to I, I mean, silly question, but total thumbs up, I guess, for you. Um, but oh, obviously- absolutely. Thumbs up in terms of, like I said, the quality of film and everything. Just, just if you're talking of film as art, 100%, this film is art. If you're talking film as entertainment, that's a different discussion. And it's yeah. not for everyone. The, the people will watch this and they will just go, that's just too heavy, that's too depressing, I don't want to watch that. Probably in the same way people don't want to watch The Road or On the Beach or those sort of films. Otherwise known as Darren's back catalogue. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. This if, is if, actually if one of my like back those... catalogue, this film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not. to lighten the mood. I've got this indoors. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Sat right yeah. there next to On the Beach. But the so, thing is, yeah. the th- and the thing is, everyone looks at me on the podcast and says, I'm the dark and cynical one. <laughs> You're the one with a fucking apocalyptic back catalogue like Fred, we- hiding like Fred West out the back. Yep. <laughs> but I've got a yeah. video nasty vault full of shit like this. Jesus. No, no, no. Video, video nasty is a very different sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's more Jim's co- uh, department, I think, anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's, definitely, it, it's definitely a very, very good. F- this is a work of cinematic art. Mm. And I think that's the best way I can sum it up. So, absolutely, thumbs up for me. I'm not saying it is for everyone, but it's a film I think everyone should at least watch to experience what a truly well-made film is. Mm, cool. Okie dokie. Well, um, in which case, what we'll do now is we shall move on to whoever hasn't seen this film before. Um, Elton, Jim? Have a guess. I've seen it before. Okay. <laughs> Elton! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be me, isn't it? Of course it's going to be you, but I wanted to give you an option, give you the chance. Well, yeah. Um, okay, this is the first time and the second time I've seen this. Okay. And I, I think I'm going to be going along the same lines as Andy. It is a brilliant movie. I think the only bit I had seen prior to that is when they just open up on that building when it's all really quiet and they're getting the kid out and then all of a sudden it's, no, fuck that building and fuck all these buildings around it as well. Mm. And they just try and reduce it to rubble. And that's all, all I'd actually seen up until that point. And, yeah, I came into it wondering what it's going to be all about. I knew that it was going to be about children of men and I knew that, I knew the the basic premise of kids hadn't been born and what the hell was going on. I wasn't prepared for it to be so fucking grim, though. Mm. Really, really grim. Or, you know, Clive Owen's face, it always looks (laughs) sad, doesn't it? He does look like he's trying to sell you a pair of shoes, but you've just walked into the shop with a pair of shoes under your arm. Like, he ooh. looks like a car salesman who's turned around and said, okay, I need to sell this car. How can I big it up? Okay, yeah, it's got uh, different speed wipers on it. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Well, 
the wipers they go they go slow mm. click and they go fast and that's it yeah he 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 looks like the he looks like the kind of guy who's been tasked with going through our pa- going through our back catalog and basically having to catalog in an excel spreadsheet every time the word prometheus comes up for the first year <laughs> it's just got that hangdog expression of a man having to just do something that no one really wants to do yeah but but that being said i, I that. think that sort of face totally suits this movie it doesn't feel out of place and it doesn't draw you out of when the action and excitement kicks in whereas i think other actors let's put another let's put an a star let's put i don't know tom cruise in there or idris elba in there maybe i think that you'd be more drawn to them in the situation mm. rather than what is going on around them and it's just a another body that we're laying alongside and what i like about this movie is it it feels very much like an rpg there are moments where you think you're just waiting for a command to pop up on the screen for you to run to the next bit the the giving birth bit now waggle your left joystick left and right to give birth and that's what i was waiting for that sort of thing you know completely mash the triangle button to give birth or to jump over this it, it, I felt like I was really immersed in what was going on. Press and just waiting for commands. Press X to connect Sid with a car battery. <laughs> yeah, it has got that Clang. kind of feel. <laughs> it's it's got that kind that of feel is, during it. I wonder if that's down to how it's filmed, though. It's very much documentary style. Like you feel there's a cameraman running along behind them the entire time, mm. especially. Well, yeah, I, th- I think on the, the last 10 years or so, games have got like this. This is before all the games that I've played have come out. And so games have drawn upon this and put you into that cameraman angle, put you in the car and spun you around the car, put you right on the floor and then made you run over there dodging bullets. And this is what that film has done. And I felt really immersed in it. And that's what they're they're going for. But flipping out, I was on the sofa ducking bullet, uh, bullets at, at most points. There were a couple of situations when that was happening. Mm. And I love it for that. I love that when you, you feel you're so in there. And I, I don't even think it was I was attached to the ca- uh, characters that were in there. Mm. It was more that I was thrown in there. And I felt part of it. Mm. It, it had a, a feeling of half-life as well. Which you remember twi- on the train, where yeah. you're, you're on the train and you're, you're driving through to Black Massa. And Mesa. Mesa. Mesa, sorry, I forget. And you look out the windows and you see all the stuff going on. And there's a lot of scenes like that as well, especially when that lady gets dragged off that bus. Yep. And all the lights go bang on the bus. You're like, oh, shit. And then you can just see all the stuff outside and your bus drives off. And you're like, oh, something's going on there. She don't want to be there. Mm. And yeah, it's it's all the games that I've played up until, well, from the early 2000s up until now. They, it's all incorporated into this. And I love it. I love it for that. Yeah. I, I, it is very grey, but there is also little bits that you you could really put on posters right and there's that bit where he's gone to say i forget is it his brother or brother-in-law or and he's at a bermondsey power station oh that's his power. brother yeah Battlesea yeah. power station and you've got the pig floating outside very pink floyd it, pink, pink floyd isn't it yeah the animals cover hmm. yeah that's right and it, it, it's just okay there there is a shot where he stood on one side he's brother stood on the other side you've got the pig in the middle you're like yeah okay that is a, a poster right there like andy said it is all bits of art dotted mm. around all over the place but yeah i i love it although the themes nowadays they're a bit too close to home they are mm. so close to home and yeah it makes me not want to go down to london 
Yeah. It really does. Well, you know, as it, the amount of times I've walked out of a bombed coffee shop these days, you know, I just can't count it on the amount of <laughs> on my hand. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I, I won't go into the shots because I'm sure other people want to talk about that, so I'll let you, you guys do that. Although I'm very interested in how they did do it. I'm going to be looking up them videos on, on YouTube to find out how they did do the shots because it's not until you're in the middle of a shot that you realise, hang on a minute, we haven't cut away for a bit, have we? Mm. And I like that, but it also makes me go back and watch the movie again because I don't want to be drawn out thinking, hang on, we haven't cut away for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> because then you're thinking, okay, when's the next cut going to be? And it keeps spinning around in the car or it keeps spinning around in the building. You're like, this is really good, but now I'm noticing that we haven't cut away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The the, uh, the cinematographer on this, Emmanuel Lubzecki, uh, he also did Birdman, which famously oh, is. Oh, did he? Yeah, love that. The, the one continuous shot. Although, just like in Birdman, it's not really. There are yeah. cuts, yeah. but it's just done in such a way you can get around it. There's uh, in the final scene of not the long shot when they're going up to the um, to the building uh, to get the baby back. And as he's going through the bus, there's a shot and a blood pack goes off and some blood lands on the lens, yeah. which actually yes. happened, the blood landed on the lens. But when he gets in, there's a bit when he looks up, but when the camera looks down, the, the blood's, blood's gone. gone. Yeah, so there's, there's, been a, there's been a cut there. But I thought it, it's so well done, unless you aren't looking for those moments, which I was, <laughs> you're not going to notice it. Yeah. Cool. Okie dokie. So, um, yeah, right. Well, let's move on to to you then, Jim. What do you think of uh, this film then, sir? Uh, Well, this is a film I've seen several times. Um, But as Andy says, it's not a film you you stick on a Saturday night, you know, with a beer, is it, really? No. Hey, kids, gather round. It's Strictly, (laughs) and then we'll watch Children of Men. Um. But I mean, I still vividly remember seeing it for the first time and being um, just just so impressed by just every aspect of it. This is, I think, as Andy said, this is a textbook example of a very well made film of where you just have a lovely synergy of script, cinematography, performances, uh, storyline, theme, mood. It just it just it fills it gives you a whole world to go into a world you're very glad to leave at the end yeah <laughs> but it is just so beautifully realized and without ever being very sort of preachy or heavy handed it managed to to say far more about um i'd say issues of the day but in truth issues for uh well They've been now. relevant at any point from the start of the 20th century onwards. Yeah. Um, and it speaks to them eloquently and powerfully and far more than 20 years' worth of Nazis are bad, ooh, poor disabled people, give me an Oscar films. Yes. Um, that preach to the choir and nobody sees anyway. Whereas Children of Men, I think, although... It's not a fun watch. It is a satisfying movie to watch. And it has a story and a hook that, you know, people, you know, oh, it's, it's a sci-fi dystopian movie. I'll watch this and it will blow their minds. Mm. <laughs> you know, in the way kind of really good science fiction can. And um, it's not it's not really a film that just uh, is going to play to a handful of critics, win awards, and then... A year's time, I'll go, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, this, it's now taught in film school. I mean, mm. um, but it, I think it's a it's film that more people... It's just that. Yeah, but it's also, I think, people that you keep, um, keep on discovering, you know what I mean? Every now and again, I see someone on Twitter, I just watched Chindle Men, oh, my God. Mm. And people say, going, yes, I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay. Have a cup of tea. You're amongst We're friends. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> but but even as bleak as it is, though, I think it's got a lot more going for it than other sort of grimathons. Uh, and I think that's because 
although it doesn't set up a dystopia which, you know, a handful of plucky rebels with a magic laser sword are going to sort out. You know, it very much leaves you with, you know, well, a lot of dark thoughts. We're going to, you know, are the human project, are they really the good guys? Are they another bunch of arseholes like everybody else? Do they even exist, to be honest? Well, exactly. Um, but I think there's still something uplifting and there is, it gives you hope at the end hmm. that, you know, that this this could be a turning point. But also it gives you closure because I think it's very much kind of, it's Theo's story mm. of the, as a man who kind of, he had ideals, he lost his ideals, he was, you know, he lost love of his life. He lost his child. He's just been going through the motions. And then he said, waiting to die. But he gets, he discovers a sense of purpose. Mm. And I wouldn't say it's anything as crass as a redemption story, but it is kind of, he, he, he finds a, a piece at the end from, mm. you know, getting her away. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's which some... is just, I love the fact it's very underplayed and mm. that, you know, it, it doesn't tip its hand to that right until he, you get the blood at the boat, at the boat, on the floor of the boat at the end. Yeah. <clears throat> you think, bloody hell, oh, oh, he's took a few shots, but you're that inured to people just walking away from explosions and getting multiple bullet runs from decades of action movies. You don't even consider yeah, that his card his card may well have been marked. Which really, considering this type of film, you think, yeah, she, she I should have really, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's everything not, else. Is good. It's not. It's not the kind of so you know film where you know you can nuke a large section of rainforest and Arnie will be protected because he's got some mud on his face. <laughs> He'd be on the log. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think the the soundtrack is incredible because it's it's very much like a, a found music soundtrack. Mm. Um, well, I think there's only a very few bespoke pieces in there, but everything else has been sourced from elsewhere. And it's just, but it's picked so beautifully and it just works so well from mm. using music that's playing in the world to to set the mood to um, some of the you know the beautiful pieces they pick to to score various scenes. And it never sort of, it feels like an organic whole. But at the same time, it's not, it's not overamping the emotion and overplaying its hand. Mm. And the fact there's so much of the film where there's no music just telling you what to feel. Is, mm. You know, again, that's, that's a hurdle where this film could have really fallen down in yeah. the hands of a lesser director. Mm. Um, again, I mean, I, I came away and just like, bloody hell, it's kind of, that's not dated at all. It's, it's now actually, that's a future now that's worryingly a lot closer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of like, it's sort of depressing because there will always be people who will go along with the arseholes when everything goes to hell. Yeah, and then look for someone yeah. to blame for it as well, rather yeah. than, than mm. own up to any sort of ownership of this stuff themselves. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, so it's somewhat bleak, but bleak but brilliant. It's one of those, although it's a very dark film and there's lots of um, very bitter food for thought. I still come away from it with a kind of weird exhilaration mm. and a satisfaction because it is kind of, in a way, right? Because the film like this has been made, it's like Christ, at least somebody gets it. Yeah, <laughs> and hopefully this film out there will help other people get it a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs not just to be taught in film school. It needs to be just taught in school, full stop. Mm, definitely. Mm. Um, but yes, um, yeah. So I still, still a high recommend from me. I say it's a, I say it is a phenomenal film. Um, and you know, it's my argument for anyone who says, "Oh, the twenty first century cinema has not produced any real classics." Well, bollocks. Have children or men? Yeah. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Take a look at that. Enough said. Mm, mm. Yeah, okie dokie, cool. Well then, um, in which case we shall move on to you, Mr. B. Give us your thoughts uh, as, as, the, as the chief apocalypto in the room. As the chief apocalypto, yeah. Um, I've got to say, thanks to Andy for sort of mm. wording what I've been trying to, f to figure out What's how to say. And it's just, 
you know, you come and say, oh, yeah, this is one of my favourite films. Mm. So like, for something like this, you've yeah. got to get context before you say something like that and what you actually mean by favourite film. Yeah. You know, as Jim has also pointed out, you can't come in and say, you know, I really enjoyed this film. No. Because it's like, what does it say about you? You can enjoy aspects <laughs> of it. Yeah. So um, to echo those thoughts that have gone before, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. It's mm. it's It rates up there as one of my top ones. Mm. Um, and I think one of the reasons mm. it does that, yeah. and it stands out above a lot of apocalyptic films, in my opinion, yeah. is, one, it's an extremely British, an extremely English version of the apocalypse. Mm. Everything in it is spot yeah. on. Yeah. Now, um, the director... Alfonso Cuaron, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, did he have a hand in writing this as well? Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah. Um, for someone who's not, um, shall we say, um, who's not from England, he yeah. has a fine grasp of how the English mind works. Yeah, I mean, don't forget that obviously it was written by P.D. James, so there was... The, the, you still have to adapt from... it for this, because yeah. it is different. The, 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 there, there are... There are major say, there's, there's five screenwriters attached to this, and yeah. Clive Owen yeah. also did ad, uh, additions to it. Okay. Um, mm. th- the attitude is just spot on. Yeah. Everything about this film says it's this is this is the point of view of people in this country, how they would handle the lit- what is literally the end of the world. Yeah. It's I- that. It's that. Mm. I don't know. Is that cynicism that goes with it? That um, rolling on through it. Mm. It's. Um, I think. I know we've kind of said about Clive Owen being not the world's most interesting actor. No, I think we equated him to being a piece of wood from Juicens, something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think he was possibly one of the most perfect actors to pick for this role mm. because I think he just. Yeah, his attitude is correct. Yeah. the What makes this film quite even more scary than anything else mm. is that it's five minutes in the future. Yeah. Everything around it is very believable. Yeah. The whole way the attitude is going, especially mm. now, right? You mm. have a look at the political situation in that film. Yeah. And Britain is very much standing by itself as yeah. far as it's concerned, because you see the news reports about this in this country, this in this country, mm. only Britain, Stand. only Britain is is handling this the correct way. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that going on what is happening currently yeah. in this country, mm. about us breaking away from Europe, about us being isolated. Yeah. Right? Becoming this yeah. little isolated country fits in with this yeah because it's the rest of the world is wrong we're right yeah the whole question of what happens to people who are um who are not born in this country but have settled here and become citizens Mm. what happens to them Mm. once we break away from europe there's a big question mark still hanging over that you Mm. see what happens in this film yeah and it's kind of like well as much as this is a nightmare vision what I'm seeing before me is a possibility, a great possibility. Yeah. People in cages. Yeah. People shoved into internment camps. Well, you're already seeing it in America. That yeah. was the whole thing with the kids in the kids in the cages, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's now starting to see You could in. see it over here. I can see yeah. it quite happening happening over here. Mm. Um so there's that there's mm. those touchstones there. Mm. Now, where some films can go all out, mm. pe- uh, films like, um, let's go for one perfect example, mm. AI by Stanley Kubrick, right? Mm. There's not a single, mm. there's not a single redeeming feature of anybody <laughs> in that film. Right. Right, there's nothing, right? Everybody, everybody's horrible in it. Mm. Everybody, there is no, there's no... Um, there's no hope in that film at all because yeah. people are just, they're just horrible. That's it. It's just the worst of humanity. There is no goodness in anybody in that film. Mm. 
right? No. It's all self-centred selfishness. Yes. You know? In this film, mm. as much as there is terrible stuff going on, there's also points of light. Yeah. Right? There's little things that happen in this film mm. that show that humanity is not quite done yet. You know, that mm. it's not all people being horrible. Right. And it's little things like um, the the woman that they get to guide them through getting near the end of the film that takes them to that place where they stay where she finally has a baby. Yeah. It's her actions. Mm. Right? Where they get on the boat to get out of the sea and she mm. doesn't go with them because she doesn't want to slow them down. Yeah. And she stares back, even though Clive Owen's... And even with Clive Owen, he's going, no, get on board. Yeah. It's yeah. like him. There's a there's that thought about that person. Mm. When he says to her, stay there, and he comes back for her later on, it's mm. like, no matter how cynical he's become, there's still that little spark of Idealism. goodness in him. Yeah, yeah. That he's thinking of someone else. Yeah. Well, he, his actions, get, as it goes on, as much as he doesn't want to admit it, he actually gives a shit. Mm. You know? So yep. there are there are points of light in this film. Yeah. And I think I think one of the, the bits of the those points of light that gets me the most in this mm. um is Michael Caine. His yeah. character. Yeah. Right? Right. There's something about that is the I think that that part of the film is the th- the film that really fucking just punches you right in the feels every single fucking time I watch yeah. it. I forget about this. Mm. You got a man here, mm. all jolly Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Pull my this, finger. Yeah, yeah. Pull my finger. Got this inner sadness. He's got yeah. this, this wife, mm. right, who you can see he absolutely adores with every mm. fibre of his being because yeah. he's looking after her while she's in this state. Yeah. And he doesn't he doesn't complain about it. He's so happy to do it. Yeah. Right? And the bit that always kind of gets me is when he tells Clive Owen and everyone else, go, I'll stall them. Yeah. I've talked my way out of worse, yeah. Yeah, and then as they go, he pulls out the box. Yeah, the Oblivion, the Oblivion whatever, box. whatever it's called, yeah. yeah. And he sits there, and you see him open the box, and yeah. he gets it all prepared and ready to go. Yeah. And it's that whole thing of, as much as you love somebody, mm. what would you do so that they won't suffer? Yeah. Even though you don't want to do mm. the inevitable. Yeah. Can you show your love enough for that person that yeah. you'll just go and do it anyway? Yeah, because he does the dog as well, doesn't he? He does the dog, and he, but it's it's that it's mm. that really mm. fuck me. That is just that's overpowering. That that's bit. powerful stuff. Yeah, it is, and it's just the whole thing. Where he stands there, and he's he's defiant in the face mm. by cracking a joke. Mm. With these guys, mm. and it's you just want to kill every single. You just want to reach in the screen, and just grab every single one of those fuckers and kill them. Yeah, that's it. And just put your thumbs in their eyeballs and stuff mm. like that. You know, mm. it's that kind of. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great scene for the way it's it's played and the emotional weight yeah. carries in it. And that that for me, mm. that is oh my word, mm. just that. Mm. I what I was watching this on the way into work, and it got to that bit. Mm. When it got to the bit where he's, he's about to euthanize his wife, and yeah. that I'm in the middle. I've got like fifty or sixty people standing round me, and it's crowded, yeah. and I can feel, I can yeah. feel the stinging as oh, I'm watching yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I can feel it welling up, and I'm having to fucking keep a straight face mm. as I'm going every single time. Yeah. I forget about it, and then I see that, and it's just like, oh my god, yeah. this is why I like his character so much. Mm. Because... That Ruby Tuesday starts playing, and then it's oh, just like exactly oh. the whole emotional weight, and it's mm. not overblown. It's so understated. Yeah. You just see the box, and you know what it's for. Yeah, there's no big fanfare made about it. No great sweeping sort of like emotional score. No, you've just got Ruby Tuesday playing. I think that's what's playing in the background. Yeah. And you just see him look down and open the box. Yeah, it's and like, it's just, it's, okay. it's just he reaches up for his wife, and it's that. Yeah, fucking hellfire. Just yeah. the whole thing is so beautiful. Did he get an award for that? Do we know? No, for his part, because he should have got a, some sort of BAFTA or something for that. Because no, I don't, I don't think he did. To be honest, um, that's a shame. Yeah, I did, I did skip over the awards, but I'll, uh, I'll have a look no. while you carry on talking. He didn't even get nominated. No, I didn't think he did. That he was robbed. 
Man was robbed. Man was robbed. Um. Anyway, carry on. Go on. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this this mm. film is a fine example of how to do mm. how to do the apocalypse, and still put in there some hope that's not overblown, mm. but just under the surface. So yeah. it keeps you kind of ticking along, mm. you know. And even the ending of the film is great, where Clive Owen's done his bit. Yeah. You know, and he's bleeding, mm. and he's like, you know, don't worry, mm. it'll all be fine. Yeah, it'll all be fine. Yeah, be fine. And then yep. the boat shows up. Yep. And it is just a nice mm. closer to that because after this, I don't think he's got anything else anyway. No, no. That's it. He's like, you know, mm. somebody's done the job for him. Yeah. And taking him out of the picture. Yeah. The, the woman he loved mm. has been taken away mm. even that bit as well you see him break for that minute in the forest oh yeah after she dies she yeah. gets shot and dies mm. and then they're in the forest they've taken that they're just out of the car for a little while mm. and then he's by the tree and he just collapses mm. it's just beautiful yeah. acting really good mm. cool so uh, a thumbs up with Definitely. the with the caveat of it's an apocalyptic movie terribly bleak why would you put your thumbs up for it but thumbs up because it's a well-made film it's a well-made film it's beautifully acted um mm. yeah it this is this is the sort of films they should be making the sort of the yeah hell, that, of that sort of quality yeah you know? yeah i i think you're right i mean you know as, as you and andy and jim and elton have all said you know it's it's, it's intelligent sci-fi it's it's sci-fi it, it, it's a film that tells it tells a story by showing you the world and letting you figure it out. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. Cool. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Cool. Um, for me, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty much going to echo a lot of what you've already said. Um, I think it's so well made. It's a masterclass in showing you the world and letting you pin everything together rather than constantly having to tell you, Mm. um, there's two types of apocalypse movie in my eyes. There's the super bleak apocalypse like this, like The Road, like, you know, On the Beach, all these kind of films. And then there's the cool apocalypse where even though it's horrible, you kind of almost feel like, do you know what? Still be cool to be there. You know, your Blade Runners and Akira's and all this kind of th- stuff. Whereas as horrible as everything is, but it's like, hey, there's flying cars and hey, mm. there's you know, robots and spaceships and, you know, it all still looks cool. So those don't all work, though, as as nightmarish as those can be, they never feel bleak. I always find when the closer it gets to reality, the more bleak it feels. Um, so I tend to avoid these kind of apocalypse movies as a rule, just because this kind of bleak, I don't fucking need it in my life (laughs) to be honest um so i always will err on the cool apocalypse the the the, you know that oh we're all going to hell in a handbasket but you know what we got space lasers you know that Mm. kind of stuff um this i i i enjoyed it insofar as i thought it was a very well made movie i thought it was a very well told tale and i thought all the acting was universally brilliant in it i thought that a lot of the themes in it were really interesting. The fact that essentially it's the nativity. Mm. Because she even makes a gag of, you know, it's that she, you know, it was a virgin birth. Yeah. And then there's, and there's also the bit when she reveals to the, to Clive Owen that she's pregnant, she's literally standing in a fucking stable. What's that line? He uses? So you brought me in to talk about tits and chickens. Or tits something and chickens, like that. Exactly. <laughs> But you know that sort of thing, and the the, the fact that the, the they are persecuted, mm. you know, and it is it's in the it's the nativity. It's essentially that yeah. that the child is going to come and bring hope, and you know, and and there's all these political machinations trying to use it for their own gain. So mm. like the Romans are after it, and you know all these kind of other you know other factions. So that kind of thing, I sort of saw and appreciate. The one thing, and it's the one thing that for me. Maybe I was thinking too much about that in particular, but that was because of the fi- the way the film kind of was presenting everything in this really intelligent way. 
that you could look into the world and you could pull the details that you needed to pull. You could see the things you needed to see and you could make up the backstory from what was around you. The the obvious example being the newspapers on the wall that show you that the wife had been tortured by the FBI, that kind of thing. Yeah. The thing that they show you right at the beginning is the, the youngest person on earth dies. That's your first kickoff. And the whole world goes into this kind of, oh, it's terrible, oh, sort of thing. Goes into like a day of mourning. Goes into a Princess Diana style kind of... I was going to make a comment about that yeah. as being a, the part of the British yeah, thing as the well. the British thing. But it's the comment about the mm. complaint about mm. Clive Owen. Oh, and there they were all crying their oh, eyes out. out. He was a prick. It's the, yeah. It's but, the woman opposite with the little flags on the desk just kind of dabbing her eyes. Yeah, exactly. But the one thing that it does, and, it, and as soon as I saw it, I couldn't get it out of my head all the way through the film. And it kind of threatened at one point to tip over, tip me over on the film. Is if there's so little people and there's so few people around, and that this the youngest person on earth is is that important that there is like literally a global day of mourning for the loss of this kid. Mm-hmm. Why is everyone quite so happy to go around and shoot the shit out of literally anyone they see? If life is that precious, which it would be, why is it everyone could casually run around and shoot people in the head? Not everybody's running around shooting everybody in the head. Well, let's let's be honest. Doris in the office wasn't running around. This is a thing. You've got okay, various okay. this is various factions. But even so, even so, if the whole point of the film the whole point of the film is that the baby, a first baby, is that important that it would actually stop the fighting of between two factions would actually literally stop all the fighting in the street. If it was that important, if life was that precious, then why is everyone quite so content to shoot the shit out of each other? Bombs oh, going I think, off. I think, I think, I think there's a, a difference anyway. between life being precious and the baby. I think in this world, life is very cheap, or at the very least... But surely um, it wouldn't be. That's, but, that's but, my the point. point. Was, the point I was making is it's, it's not that. It's, it's the fact that you can't have children. You can't have children because it's a selfish thing, I suppose. You have no future, so fuck everyone. Because you can't have a child and carry, you, your line won't carry on. Fuck everything. It, you, you don't care about other people. You, they, they might say they do, mm. but I don't think they do. Mm. And we even see that with... Um, uh, What's his name? Uh, Chiwetel Itafor's mm. group saying, oh, we're here to save and help the baby. They, yeah. don't, they don't really care about the baby. No. They care that the baby will put them in a position to unite these groups and put them in charge of taking over. Mm. It's it's a bit like the... Uh, the Killmonger thing, I suppose, in Black Panther. He doesn't yeah. want to make the world better. He mm. just wants him and his to be on top there. Yeah, he, he's. That's why I don't think when people say Killmonger is a great villain, I don't think he is. He doesn't want to fix things. He just wants to flip things. Mm. And I think that's the same in this film. They don't want or really care about the baby outside of the political gains it gives them. Mm. Mm. But then, but then that's the. But then that's my point. As soon as, as soon as they become, as soon as they become the villains, due to one of the clumsiest. And it is a, a an indicator of how well the rest of the film is done, that the exposition of that guy in the dreads turning up and then having to have yeah. the <laughs> argument at the fucking window. We're going to shoot him. Then we're going to shoot him. And then we're going to get them. We're going to get the baby. Urgh, kind of thing. It's like really, really. You've 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 not had to drop one line of exposition. But now we have to have Clive Owen magically appear outside of a window in time to hear a magical conversation at four o'clock in the fucking... I'll get out of it. But (laughs) You're also asking about Mm. would it go like that? I think it would go like that because, Mm. as Andy said, with the baby being precious, everyone else's life is not precious. And so... Well, fuck you. We're we're going to end it, so we might as well end it on my terms. And I have a gun, so let's just end it that way. Are you telling me 
you don't think the world would be like that because everyone is very selfish. And I think that is the way that it would go. Well, I, I mean, like I say, let me let me just underline everything before I go further that I do think this is a very good film. I do think this is very well made and I do think it's very well acted. I think the effects and the shots and the composition and the direction is all top notch. I I really am just nitpicking because of the world and the way it's presented. The what I'm thinking is if you suddenly tell me that this baby is powerful enough to just by its very presence able to change things. Yeah. No, because it's, it's, it's You have to remember nobody's heard a baby cry for like the last 20 years. That's right. It's a shock. It's kind yeah. of like that's what's that's what yeah. really kind of stops them. It's the fact that hope appears in the form of this small child. That's right, and that's cool. I'm not. I'm not saying that that. Oh, well, look. And what I'm trying to say is, if you present the world as being utterly selfish, as it, as it is in this film, some of it. No, it's it's not. This is this is the thing. Not everybody's going to do the hive mind thing of being. Of, of having exactly the same attitude. It's no, like no, people... I'm not, I'm not that naive. I'm not... No, it's, I'm just, it's, it's hmm. the whole thing of... It's uh, going back to the whole not having children thing. Yeah. Right? It's... It's the cycle... It's the... It's the... <sighs> the point is... The point I'm... Okay. I, I understand what you're trying to aim at. What I'm trying to say is... If if the whole point of this film is that the baby is so important that everyone wants it, everyone wants it. The the human faction wants it. Ch- 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 Edge of Four's um, bunch want it. Um, she wants to get away out of the country because you know you can't go public with it because the government will bury it. If that's if it's that powerful, then surely th- that baby being presented you know shows you life right that shows you hope that shows you redemption it that shows, shows you, you that, all... is, it, that the problem right is kind of it can be it's solved. like there's a light here hmm. there's there's in the darkness we haven't got that the human race is not going to end in 20 years time now. no but that's my point if the human race was going to end in 20 years time and life was so precious that a very baby could change the entire world, which it is presented as that's the way it's going to be. Whoever gets hold of this baby is literally going to be in charge. Then surely the attitude would be that all life is precious right here, right now, because that's all we've got left. No, no, no I don't think it would. Be I don't, though. I don't. It, it's, no. it's like seven Eve. I know you've read that and other people oh. haven't. Sorry, but it's that sense of, when there's no future, yeah. then there's no there's no hope. And this is one of the themes throughout the film, I think. When there is no hope for the future, life is cheap, which is why the government's issuing the suicide packs and everything. It's it's like, hey, you had enough of living? No biggie, here you go. Go off yourself, save us the trouble of having to do it for you. I think with the, the baby, the reason that's so precious is, as Darren says, no one's heard a child crying in 20 years. And the only reason it was allowed out is because the soldiers were, they were grunts. We hear so many times about, you know, and I'm finger quoting good people just following orders or doing what they think right is right and that sort of thing. These are just guys who are just, they join the army because that's what you do. They're not thinking big picture-ish. I think you'll find if it was a general or something there and heard a baby crying, he'd be like, all right, get that baby because that's power right there. But these mm-hmm. kids are just like, oh, my God, it's a baby. This is the most amazing thing. And they just stop and let it go. I I think in this world, though, life is exceptionally cheap, far cheaper than it is in our one. And we're all dying anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I think to the point of why don't they go public, it's it's like they said in the film. Whoever, if they give it to the government, they'll say that a posh uh, black woman had it there and they'd use it for their political aims to strengthen their power. They don't really care about the baby itself, just what it represents to them. But then, um, okay, but then in which case... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, there's also the fact that 20 years is a long time to cling to the hope. 
that this is all going to get sorted. Well, Five years, maybe. But after that, hope becomes a lot harder to hang mm. on to okay. for everyone. So, right? so it's uh, we're, so we're working on a cure, but there's still no cure coming. And it's just the situation's getting bleaker. Hmm. Nobody's getting any younger. No new pe- no new babies are being born. Hmm. It's kind of you can see the end coming, and as this goes on, society does become less hopeful, and people do react to it in different ways. Okay, and I, I all of that is like, well, I mean, and it's that whole thing of suddenly of of, of being of not having. Mm. Even though people are, you know, some people probably wouldn't, you know, have that as a priority in their life to have a child. Mm. They've got the choice. Take that choice away from them. Slam that door in their face. Mm. And after a while, I mean, people can go various different ways with that Mm. information. They can deal with it and they can come to terms with it and carry on. But some people, Mm. some people can't. That, that, I don't know, people say it's like immortality. Yeah. And that, it's it's having that choice, it's having that ability, that mm. fundamental thing taken away. Mm. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to be any sort of great psychological expert on it, but it's that, it's that basic human thing mm. that has now been removed from the equation. How does that affect a person? Uh, yeah, you know, I in, mean, I know it's, I know it's, 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 it's in in terms of that. I understand. I, I mean, you know, obviously, it's story as well is driving the whole thing as well. I mean, because hmm. let's be honest, you know, while we're on the while we're on a bit of a bleak tip, you know, if you're talking about no hope in twenty years, we all should off ourselves in the film. I mean, let's be honest. How do you see the planet going in like the next twenty twenty five years? I mean, you know, yeah. it, by by children and men's standards, we should all be standing there trying to catch a bus with our face. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> so... Uh, but the thing is, we're looking at the possibility of it. Mm. For people and children and men, it's happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, They're over the tipping con- point. It's a concrete Which fact. is a big, big psychological difference. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> um, but, I mean, like I say, I, I, just, I, found that, I just found that at some point I was just thinking that Life over and over again was being dispatched so casually in a film in a film which was telling us that there were only a limited amount of people left, and I could see like the upper echelons kind of sitting there going, "Yes, we'll we'll just sit here and let them eat cake, and you know let you know as represented by Clive Owen's brother, just sitting there tiddling away with his mate playing the CGI Rubik's cube bollocks." It's the whole bit when they're driving down to that as well, when mm. they go under Admiralty Arch, and yeah. you've still got the changing of the guard. You've got, uh, you've got people playing in the park in their finery, and it just looks like a picturesque little scene of um, yeah. some upper-class Britain. You know, that, that's, you know, that's the Jacob Rees-Mogg view of London, right, or of England, yes. right there. And he'd be like, no, I'm fine with this. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice. You know, children playing freely in the, uh, yeah. in the park as... The Household Cavalry march past in front of uh, Buckingham Palace and uh, the Union flag flies proudly over all of it. Yeah. And for people living in that bubble, they don't give a shit mm. about uh, any of it because thought... they're never going to go to bed. Uh, uh, as, as, Clive, as Clive Olin telepods from Buckingham Palace to <laughs> Battersea Power Station in less than one road. But that's well, obviously, it. it's the 28 weeks later School of London. Yes. I, I think the, the joke that Michael Caine tells Mm. As uh, you know, that kind of just sums it up, where he says mm. the human project mm. all meets together, and there's all like one representative from each country, mm. and they're all sitting there and they're discussing how to resolve this issue. Mm. You know about uh, what's their opinion on it. You know what do mm. you think? Yeah, and everybody's arguing. It comes to the British representative, yeah. the English representative, sitting in the corner, who's mm. tucking into his dinner, mm. not saying a word. And I say to him, um, have you got any opinion? Have you got any ideas on mm. this whole problem? He goes, I've got absolutely none. Mm. But doesn't this stalk taste lovely? 
Yeah. It's the whole thing of babies being brought yeah. in by storks. Yeah. Which is, so that, I get. Mm. I get what, I get the mm. joke, you mm. know, that he's a pretty dark joke. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that just about sums up yeah. the upper echelons in this. Yeah, world. I understand that. Yeah, I was. I mean, I just, oh, I don't know. I, I, I. All I was, all I'm saying is, I suddenly had a f- feeling that if you're going to show, if you're going to show the human race as all this one-sided, everyone hates everyone, everyone's gone into this nihilistic depression. You can't do that and then suddenly go, yeah. But this baby's important because, as far as as far as everyone's concerned, the way it's been represented is they just look at the baby and go, "Yeah, one, we got to wait for that baby to grow up." By which time we're all dead. So, but not everybody is like that. That's the thing. Well, there are certain <clears throat> factions. In that which are. case, in which case, you can't have it. You can't have it both ways. Why not? It's you like that in the world already. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, you can't have it in. Again, I I stress that I'm literally nitpicking here, but the yeah. point is you you can't have it both ways. You can't have the whole film represent the whole human race, with the exception of Clive Owen, and um and oh god, what's her name? Julianne, Julianne Moore, Moore and, and and Michael Caine and Michael Caine and um was it Mama 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 Larkin? Yeah. Mama Larkin. So have them have them five as a representative of the entire of the entire good in the human race, while the rest of the world turns to shit because they don't don't value life. The others do, and then all of a sudden go, yeah, well, you know, this baby's going to be fine. But everything's going to be it's fine. Not everybody that that's the thing. They just. I mean, I, I think well, you see that when mm. they first see the baby, then the people that were shooting and killing all of a sudden do stop. They yeah. stop in awe, and then, it, it does unify people there. Yeah, it, uh, it it has the effect you're saying you're not seeing. No, for, yeah, for approximately twenty seconds, and then out comes the RPG to the tank, and then suddenly the entire building turns into vapor. That's because well, I, I do find high explosives tend to focus the mind somewhat. Yeah, yeah and it's nobody a bit of an attention grabber, and 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 nobody, <laughs> but no, it is a bit of an attention grabber, but nobody on nobody on the ground Ooh. suddenly goes, um, "Hi, um, Air Force coming in with your three nukes." Um, just a little heads up. The first baby on Earth has just been born and just walked past. Nobody tells the... No, no, okay, fine. So in which case, what power the baby? I think half of them probably wouldn't believe... Anyone who didn't physically see it wouldn't believe it. And the ones that did see it, as I said, their their minds were suddenly drawn to something else. Rather explodey. Nevertheless, they knew that the air strike was coming, and even bloody Sid, before he got his um, got his um, trepanning via car battery, knew that the air force were coming in. But we haven't Rock- spoken enough about Sid. <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, Sid has seen this. Sid is picking this up. Sid is getting a face full of car battery. Yes. Which which was the most shocking moment of the entire film for me was just him looking around the corner and then you just heard that twang and it was just oh like wow okay I always thought those things were heavy but now now Sid Sid knows how heavy those are um, so, it's going to take a nap now yeah, Sid Sid's going back to Halfords with a recycle <laughs> with a recycle ticket so anyway and. Yeah, the endlessly burning the horses. I didn't quite get what that was all about. Was it was it horses or was it um were they cows? Oh, well, either way. Mad cow disease? I don't, I don't know. know. Sudden um, mouth outbreak? Yeah, I'd yeah. have thought. Or some similar disease. I mean there's this whole thing in the backstory that you know, mm. they think you know, there there is some sort of virus maybe causing the infertility. Mm. And quick and clearly everyone's very jumpy about disease outbreaks. Yeah, exactly. It's also, that's why it's not the baby that's important, it's the girl. Yes, that's very true, because she, yeah. And she, she might hold the key to reverse all of this. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. exactly. Which, again, mm. you know, makes me kind of curious as to one minute, the you know, the whole thing has power and everyone stops, and then five minutes later it's like, well, she could still be in the area, oh dear, we've just nuked it with three <laughs> fighter jets. And nobody bothers to go, hang on, um, excuse me, Mr. Air Force, people on the ground, we've just seen something you might not want to blow up. 
I'm not like I say. I I I, I know I'm nitpicking on this, but it was just it was just little tiny bits like that where the rest of the world was so well constructed and everything had an explanation if you just sat there and looked at it. That I just found that bit a little hard to swallow. That it was just it was just always just trying to get over the fact that everyone's so nihilistic that this thing wouldn't have an impact other than just oh we've stopped for five minutes. Um, I think that, that might be the depressing thing, though. That, that might actually be the more accurate one, where if something like that was to happen in this world that we have, where if, for example, you knew something was a really, really, really stupid idea and you knew how not to do it, but you still kind of bowed on with this really stupid idea. Mm. You spent so long thinking about it if you could. Yeah. And you, you might be sitting there saying, look, th- 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 I'm not They've following this story because in a well-constructed world and a story, you can see... That this is a bad thing and we shouldn't do this thing. Yeah. But still, they wrote it, it on happens. the side of the they wrote it on the side of the bus, so it must be true. Yeah. So yeah. so so maybe that's where you're falling down, Lee. You're applying too much logic. That the film did too good a job of representing how nihilistic the world is. Yeah, that's that's probably part of the problem, actually. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well there you go. Um as for the rest of it, I thought everything was really well done. I thought the the script was really sharp. I thought the um, the action was well done. I absolutely hated all of the um, faction guys, but mm-hmm. um, just because they just were all just so fucking pious, and and then when they turned out to be bad guys, I found that a little bit of a misstep. Just simply because, just simply because, while it made sense, it just seemed to just come out of left field as soon as Julianne Moore was out of the picture. And then all of a sudden it was suddenly like, oh, they're the bad guys. And they have superhuman powers of tracking because you've taken a car and you've hidden it in a bush 60 miles off of the bloody road, yet somehow they've managed to find you. Ah, like- uh, you see, that really bugged me as well. Yeah. But this is why re-watching this film makes a lot, it, it's so rewarding. Uh, one of the other people in that group... Mm that you see at the very beginning, the, uh, not the one of the dreadlocks, the other one who does him, you see him following Clive Owen a lot earlier in the film. He's on the train when it's getting thrown by the rocks and stuff like that. So uh... they were tailing him f- almost from the coffee shop, effectively, all the way through. So, so, so you're saying that they were... Why they knew where the thing was. <laughs> but, um... but, that was, but that's the one thing that kind of is curious because... There was, there's there's definitely shots where they show up and down both sides of the road and there's no one there when he's pulling the bushes out. He could be hiding in the bushes for all I know. Mm. I'm not trying to explain away everything. I just no. like the fact that little things like that guy being there Actors are there. Could expl- no, no, they, they, they stopped and fought and said, we'll, we'll just, this little, in the back of it, and at the beginning of the film, he's just a another extra. Mm. But once you spotted him, he's like, "Ah, hey, he's the guy from the film. Okay, mm. cool." Um, other than that, um, yeah, I've I've got an awful lot more to add. Really, I mean, like I say, I, I mean, it's kind of like the most nihilistic Christmas film you could ever possibly watch. Really, hey, Jesus has been born. Ah, the world's fucked. Um, oh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Ross Kemp's turn as Ebenezer Scrooge. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's pretty fucking. Well, we did watch oh, Star Wars Holiday Special four <laughs> years ago. Uh, Ross Kemp as as Kirk Cameron, John Saving Christmas. Scrooge, who is a loan shark on a council estate. Nice. I remember watching that. So do I. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. really a thing. You're not just making. I'm up. not. I shit you. Look it up now, right? No. It was a couple of years. It was shown on TV five, six years ago. Ross Kemp, Ross Kemp as Scrooge, right? I'm going to do this now. I'm going to look it up and I will show you, right? You probably even find it on YouTube, right? Well, while you're looking at that and while we're topping two hours and 20 minutes, let's just see if there was any um, feedback from the uh, Black Doggers underneath the uh, underneath the old banner. Um, Alexander Tovey. Uh, on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast, said, I thought this film was going to be a cheap Channel 4 production where they piled money into the star names and then the street bombing scene happened at around 7 to 10 minutes and I was caught by surprise. I loved it. Um, Chris Oster uh, said, I've read the novel and my impression of was a lot of meh. So, uh, yeah, she wasn't impressed at the uh, at the book. 
Um, P.D. James liked it. I would just say that. <laughs> well, you would, wouldn't you, if you wrote it? <laughs> um, well, um, Jack Woodgate said, well, that was worth watching. Um, Steve Porter said, this is one of the, one near future movie which at least with its portrayal of guest everyday tech and especially on the themes of immigration hysteria, isolationism, and a, is a, all a bit too close to the mark for comfort. I half expected one of the soldiers to start shouting, Brexit means Brexit! Um, to which um, to which John Campion replies, well, there was adequate, was there adequate food? David Davis was pretending to be relevant and Jason, J, Jacob Rees-Mogg instructing his butler to strike a peasant. It, that was the giveaway, really, that it wasn't in the film. Um, uh, McJeffrick, Jeff, Jeffrey Mark Hyman, uh, said, uh, Hyman, sorry, uh, said that was an excellent film, a different take on the, on the origin of a near-future dystopia that was terrifyingly plausible. It was terrible. It was terrible for my blood pressure, though. So many tense sequences on par with a D-Day sequence from Saving Private Ryan. Oh, and hippie Michael Caine was very entertaining. Um, have we got any more comments? It was uh, a Sarah Lizell one. Oh, go on. No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, You're looking at it. She, she said, uh, uh, "Still not a fan of dystopian films. Was a Barnard too long for me? May just need a second viewing. But at the moment, meh. It was all right." Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, Michael Plow, I, I apologise if I've misspelt that. Um, Plow, Plow, maybe Michael Plow. Uh, this Mr. is Plow. An, yeah, maybe this is an understated classic which just seems to get better and better with age. A long single tracking shot in the car is apparently taught in film schools. Uh, while Matt Jones replied to him saying, "Not that surprised. That shot is amazing. There are a few others in there like that that are great too. It's an excellent film." So yeah, overall seems to be the thumbs are up. Um, have you found it yet? I'm on his IMDb page now. Oh, for goodness! No, for I will Christmas find Carol. it. I, I will. Oh, fucking I tried sake. looking for it on YouTube, but it's not there. No, no, that's fine. I, I, I you know what? Do yep. You know what? It's a gap in it's a gap in my knowledge. All filmography. It's a gap in my knowledge. I can live See with. See what fantastic stuff Ross Kemp has done. I do like the um, the parody of his his Ross Kemp on gangs, which is it's there's a you know, it's Ross Kemp on gangs looking at all the gangs. It's somebody's dubbed the actual episode right with other voices. Ah, uh-huh. right. So um, yeah, awesome. Um, okay, right. Well, while that's ticking, while he's still ticking away with that, let's wrap this up. Um, before we do all the uh, goodbyes and links and whys and wherefores and that, let's tell you what we're doing next week. Well, next week, we're not doing Batman Ninja. All right? Let's just get that out of the way Good. first. We're not doing I do ba- recommend everyone watches it. Just no. not on this. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, so what we are going to do is it was a very last-minute decision just looking on Netflix and Amazon Prime. And based on that, we are going to do... The first thing that someone mentioned, and we were like, oh, okay, we'll do that. It's Pacific Rim. So there you go. Guillermo del Toro. Yep. Oh, there he is. That's that's Christmas Carol. Yep. Right. Ross Kemp uh, in just, a Christmas Carol. It's, he doesn't look like fucking Scrooge. He just looks like Ross Kemp. Yeah. Just standing there he's in a black jacket. A drug dealer. He's like... He's like Bloody he, my, uh, thingy, Steven Seagal. He's like... Always he, the same outfit, the same hair... Well, lack of hair. Same haircut. Yeah, <laughs> same haircut. <laughs> and everything he does. Yeah. Ross Kemp's so bald that when he washes his face, he doesn't <laughs> stop until the back of his neck. Um, <laughs> anyway, right. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so we're going to do Pacific Rim. Um, it's Guillermo del Toro at his most popcorn-y, shall we say. Yeah. Not so much with the gothic overtones. Um, Charlie Day, Charlie Hummond, um, uh, uh, that bloke from Torchwood. I'm sure there's a the wide mouth frog bloke. I'm sure there's a, an <laughs> asylum version. This called Specific Tim. No, there's one no? called Atlantic. Atlantic oh, yes. actually, oh, I've yeah. got that. I, I know. I gave it yes. to you because I watched it. That's right. I watched that. We really must do a no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Atlantic Rim is so bad that the only way you can tell that they're in different robots, yeah, 
is that they've Somebody changed... changes the colour of the sofa that they've no, got in the living room. Off, they're actually off. filming they've it. Got, they've, yeah. got a string, they've got a string of Christmas lights around the back. Oh, right. And it's red for the hero. Yeah. And then blue for his girlfriend in another robot. And then green for the bloke who's obviously going to die. Right. Yeah. And sure enough, yeah, he does. And they're all in the same cupboard under the stairs. Are they? Yeah. I just thought it was someone's living room and they've got no, like, it's, it's a def- sofa for the chair. No, it's a cupboard under a the stairs. sideboard. No. To no. The control it's panel. one of the films on the new season of Mystery Science Theatre. I yeah. am looking forward to watching that. It's, and and they, the robots are like seven miles tall and you never see anyone get in or out of one of them. Because you know why? Because it's just physically impossible. They just live there forever no they're just un- in the cupboard under the stairs yep. with some christmas lights and tommy's my first driving school <laughs> for, a ha- for a handlebar um anyway so there you go so n- we're never doing atlantic rim ever because i saw it once and i'm never ever watching that again so the ever. patreon double bill is going to be batman ninja in a piss at the atlantic uh, rim if someone pays if some digital man if let's s- that in there as well what metal man metal hero is was it, five, seven, was it digital man sorry what was that what was that you five seven one yeah you five seven one fuck as well off. oh 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 <laughs> you can fuck off with that yeah we'll do you five seven one and we'll do atlantic rim and what was that one you watched the other week, Jim? The Dark or Into the Dark or something? Oh, uh, Hold the Dark. Hold the Dark. And then and then for you, Elton, um, I don't know. What, what, what film do you absolutely detest? Don't, oh. Don't say G.I. Joe because we know you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about that. Okay. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe, maybe when we reopen the Patreon for a film to be ch- ch- chosen, maybe next time it'll be, it'll be find a film that everyone hates. Season. But anyway, that that'll be when we open the Patreon and panic about that again. Um, right. Okay. So yeah. So we're gonna do Pacific Rim. Just because it's you know. I quite enjoy watching a gorilla-sized monster getting smacked in the face with an oil tanker, but that's about it, really. Um, and Idris Elba, Idris fucking Elba. saving the world. We're cancelling the apocalypse. Hey! I've phoned through. I've got the appointment moved. I've moved it. Stop the clock. Ah. Um. Anyway, so, yeah, we'll be doing that. Has everyone seen this film? Elton, I have yes, I have. Uh, and 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 did you like the film? Last time you no. saw it, cool. Bit of balance there, feeling like the BBC. Here we come, Jim. Have you seen this film? I have indeed. And did you like this film? I did. There you go, um, Darren. Have you seen this film? Yes, have, did love you? it. Right, okay. And I watched it, and I've seen it a couple of times, and I enjoy it for what it is. It's not the greatest film ever, but it is good fun. Andy, since you're here, but you won't be here for next week, but we, you know, just to keep things ticking along, did you have you seen this film before? I, I saw this with you, uh, my good sir. Yes, we saw it in the cinema. Yes, uh, in, the IMAX. In, uh, indeed, I I, I I enjoyed this film so much. Uh, I might actually hide under the desk just so I can come and talk about it next week. I'm not going to, but you know, I I do enjoy it that much. Okay, well there you go. <laughs> Okay, so um, we'll be putting up the banner on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash Black Dog Podcast. Um, if you want to leave a little comment in that we'll include into the uh, podcast next week, then do so. Um, and, uh, yeah, do, do uh, well, do do that. Do, do, do. Anyway, right, okay, so uh, before we go, let's find out what everyone else is doing. Jim, do you want to promote your wares? Uh, yes, you can hear me on my old show with Hypnagoria, where this week I'm looking at a whole shoal of film featuring fishmen. Nice. Uh, something to H.P. Lovecraft's Shadow over Innsmouth. Uh, closing off my running theme of this year's podcast of aquatic horrors. Mm-hmm. And uh, episode coming in a few days' time, and this week is looking at three ghostly graphic novels from Tom Burgess. Cool, cool. And what about Commentary Club, sir? Um, I am just in the process of mixing the absolute booze-ridden train wreck that uh, we're going to call the Sharknado commentary. <laughs> nice. Which, uh, I'm going to put out next week, I think. Nice. <laughs> oh, 
I, I, I kind of, I kind of want to just listen to it and not watch the film. Can I do that? <laughs> um, I wouldn't hold it against you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, right, okay. Um, so, <laughs> on to you, Elton. What about you, sir? Uh, I was joined by the wonderful Jim Moon for an episode of Shonky Lab. Nice. And I also popped on to the Great Derelicts, which I'll let Andy plug in a minute, I'd imagine. But I would like to point people in the direction of iTunes and maybe help out us lot as a uh, as a group and maybe give us some reviews on there, you know, to counterbalance the one-star reviews that idiots drop every now and again because they it helps us up an imaginary ladder which we are all uh, grateful for. So, yeah, if you could pop along and give the Black Dog and Hypnagoria and the uh, Great Derelict reviews, among others as well, then that will be fantastic. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. And, of course, talking of the Great Derelict, over to you, Andy. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, after after a brief uh, hiatus where I kind of forgot I do a podcast, I remembered... And I released an episode last week with the good Mr. Elton McManus, where we talk about the books of the Bobbyverse, which is a fun little science fiction series. I highly recommend people check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, also, you can catch me and Elton talking, uh, what, what is it, Flappy Panels and uh, Spoilers podcast. Flappy um, Paddles and Driving in Circles podcast, isn't it? Yes, 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 that. Uh, we have the final race of the season coming up this Sunday, I believe. So yep. that should be fun. Uh, and also, uh, I'd just like to point out that the, the long-running Borg cast has reached the end of Deep Space Nine in its next episode. So, uh, you know, any, anyone who has been following along with that, it seems like a, a tremendous moment. So maybe you know, give them a yes. little bit of love as well. Uh, it's well worthwhile. And just to echo what Elton said, give some reviews. But why don't you recommend a podcast to a friend? You know, if, you, if you've got someone who's looking for something to do on a long train ride to Bristol, perhaps, say, why don't you go and uh, check out one of these podcasts and, you know... Yeah. Show them a smorgasbord of stuff from yes. our collective wares. And speaking, I'm of sure the, you'll find something you'll like. Yeah. And <laughs> speaking of the broadcast, I, I I shan't ruin their reveal um, or anything, but um, for for future stuff. But um, I have just I have done their artwork, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Quite looking forward to what happens next. Um, but, Although with Discovery, I'll probably be doing the broadcast from now until the heat death of the universe. So. Well, you never know. You never know. I can't, I can't can't possibly comment. Um, oh, and I, I know the other stuff. I was just saying I'll be doing the broadcast as well as. Ah, right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. So um, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Elton. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Andy. Um, Welcome, yes, no you can follow find us on the Facebook group, which we've already done. Um, Twitter, forget Twitter. I mean, let's let's just just put it out there that fucking twitter is just a uh, an echo chamber for people to just shout opinions and then be surprised when people in public repl- respond to them um it's the children of men of social networks isn't it it is actually that should that would have shut me up right up if you just said look at twitter because i i i i've just done done with twitter i really am but the black dog black dog podcast twitter is is alive and it will just promote the podcast but i can't be doing with it anymore people no. sh- people shout out stuff into public say this is my opinion it is fact you cannot you cannot at me because this is fact and then shout it with a hashtag so that people can find their opinion and then people disagree with their opinion and everyone's like <gasps> where did that come from it's like it's literally like the just it's just fucking oh god it's just like nonsense in a can you're shouting shit in public you're literally standing on a bus with a megaphone going you are wrong and then suddenly someone goes no i'm not and then being shocked it's just what it's just gibbering barrel of monkeys it's just fucking nonsense so i'm off i'm not in twitter anymore i don't think it's much of a loss to the twitter verse but nevertheless um, other than that, um, yes, do keep supporting us. Thank you for everyone who's supporting us um, on Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Podcast. 
um and we got a, a new new patreon who uh, sent me a lovely email saying that seeing as we didn't know certain people didn't like superhero movies certain people didn't like anime and certain people didn't like um <laughs> didn't like racing um there was a there was a lovely film for us to all check out uh it's called red line i have no idea what it's like but considering what I know about racing, you could write on the back of a postage stamp. What you know about superheroes, Elton could write on the back of a postage stamp. <laughs> Is it about and a your, superhero and, and who rides a car and it's done all I suspect, of I suspect so. Anime. I suspect so. And, you know, and because your love of anime is so good, I think it kind of covers all bases. I think Jim's going to... It's going to be like, like the end of airplane. You know, there's only going to be one person up the front sort of driving this thing while the rest of us are all gibbering and screaming down the back. I think so. Right. What was he called? Redline. Yeah, Redline. Okay. Speed racer. I'm driving a car. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh, oh fuck that. that. Yeah. No, we're not doing. We're, oh god, speed racer. Don't remind me. No. Me. No. Yes. No. I'm going sick that week. No, you're not. No, you're not. Da 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 da. <laughs> speed racer. Ah cha cha cha. Anyway, right. So, um, yes, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Thank you again for joining us, Andy. Um, oh, always a pleasure. And, uh, yes, we'll speak to you all next week. And don't forget, if you're a Patreon, there'll be a Patreon podcast next week and a poster. Must remember to make a poster. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Until then, take care. Tatty, bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Ta da. Pull my finger. I should go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bollocks to it. <laughs>